So, ready to roll. <laughs> Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up. What up? What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and like and subscribe, and also comment. And I want to make sure everyone knows this is our last Saturday on Let's Chop It Up. We're doing it on our, this is our last, last Saturday. We're all happy. If we can bring yeah. it to you on Wednesday nights. We're going to be that hump day savior. So we will be the hump day dudes that bring you into your weekend. So follow us at 9 p.m. On YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, like and subscribe and comment, brothers. How are y'all doing? Let's tell how you feeling, Derek. How's your weekend going? How's your week going? First of all, you know what, man? Very, very busy. Um, I had to. I'm, I'm a little down. I had to let go of my trainer, man. Um, today, just for a little while, I had to take a little break. Um, uh, just, just too many things going on in my personal life, man. Can't, can't make a schedule. You know, can't keep a schedule. So it's just kind of, you know. Um, my boy, my big boy is coming back in two weeks. Nice. So we'll be home for Father's Day or just before that? It's going to be after, but I got him all the way through July. I can't wait. He's going, I, he's got his, he's got his, he's, he's got a nice short duty. He's got everything he wanted, man. You know what I mean? He's got a lovely, lovely situation. So, um, so I'm happy for that. My family's doing good. My boys are doing good. Um, and I'm blessed, man. And it's my wife's. Birthday, happy birthday, baby! Love happy birthday, birthday. Oh. Gemini season, baby. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. So we're real good, man. We're real good. I wish it was a little bit. I wish the weather was a little bit better, but but we'll take what we can get, man. So yeah, I'm good, man. Other than I'm on a high note, man. That's what's up. How's your week, Rod? Um, I didn't have a good week. Um, no. no. I got motivated by Derek to join the gym. So me and my wife joined the gym. We said, we're going to start working out. We're going to drop a couple of pounds or whatever. So my wife is um, in this kickboxing class and um, she's walking around here trying to bully me now. Yeah, she's getting <laughs> combat now, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she's walking around. She's bumping into me saying, what? And all that stuff now, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm too old to be getting bullied. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm trying to tell her that the kickboxing class is not real kickboxing. And she's telling me, well, how about you try to find out? You know, so this is, you know, I had a bad week, man. I've been trying to avoid it in the house and everything, you know, so this kickboxing thing is going to a head too much. You know what I mean? It, it just was a difficult week, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting bullied in my own house. Damn, man. Hey, you remember hey, back in the day, we used to see the karate movies and come back and try to practice those moves? That's Yo. what's happening here. Yeah. That's what's happening here. Saturday yeah. afternoons were lit. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You don't know nothing about that, man. Word right up. 36 Chambers. Kelvin, how was your week, my brother? Okay, let me say this. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties, so if you lose me, I'll be back with you guys. I'll just say this. Um, last night defined my entire week. I have to be up early in the morning, like 5 in the morning. So, for some reason, a cat felt it could fight a raccoon last night. So they out there <laughs> acting like they don't know how to act. So that wakes me up, right? Yeah, so that's soon right. I get, as soon as I get back to sleep, right, then one of the natives is outside fighting with the dude she with. And then the, 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 the child is trying to say, it's just a community filled with trauma, okay? So that wakes me up. So then after Ray Ray and Spooniba finished fighting last night, <laughs> I try to go back to sleep. Then a BMW car alarm went off until about five in the morning. So that, that's how everything went. So I just, I, I almost decided to take my own life last night. But <laughs> because, because of this show, I'm, I'm with you guys. That's all. I'm, I'm here. Oh, man. Let's job yeah. done. Oh, thanks, man. Calvin. Thanks for looking out thanks, for us. Thanks for not taking your life. We need you, brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah we need oh, you. <laughs> my, my week was pretty cool. I'm glad it's raining because my allergies, my eyes are puffy because I'm glad the pollen's going for that. But we got a special guest from one of our old uh, guests. Our boy Gerald Moore sent me a package. 
Well, she sent us a few shirts, but I don't think we all could fit these shirts. These are size extra large. These some big dudes. Maybe Kelvin could get one of these joints. He sent us some shirts. You know that uh, mission fulfilled 2020. He sent us some shirts. He okay. sent a couple, yeah, he sent a few shirts. He got some books over here. So I got some. Yeah, and nice. he sent and he sent another book. So so shout out to Gerald Moore, man. Mission yeah. fulfilled. The brothers doing a lot of good things. I'm gonna hold this book up again. Please get this book, man. This guy's a de- real good dude. Real powerful brother. He's doing a lot of things. Took some kids down to. Uh, NASA down in Alabama last week, so you know, ch- check him out, man. He's a good dude, man. That's what's up. That's yeah, what's yeah, up. Yeah. So let's get to this chopping block. Our last chopping block on the Saturday. Remember, we're moving to Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. So first up, George Floyd family marks the first year since his death. Anybody want to first take take the mic? Yeah, where are we, man? It's been a, it's been a, it's been a year. It's been a year, right? Is that what mm-hmm. we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I think. You know, we kind of do this thing every year where we, you know, right around New Year's, we do the year review, and I guess we kind of just look and see what we have or what we've been and, you know, what progress we've made, if any, and what's been going on. I think we need to kind of do that as as a people right now. Where are we now um, since George Floyd? You know, we've had a year now. We've had the, the you know, we've had the protests. We have, you know, we've had the the social media posts and fury and everybody has been sharing and everything has been going on. So what has improved? You know, what's changed? Where are we now? And I hate to say, I don't know where we are right now, brother, because, you know, it's, it seems like yeah. it's happening, you know, again and again and again. So I don't know what, 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 what we need to do. You know? I know we, I know Joe Biden's trying to get this George, Boyd, George, George Floyd bill passed and done by the 25th of May. You know, it's been held up like every other bill that when it's come down to black folks from the Emmett Till yeah. bill, the anti lynching bill to this bill. We ain't got no black anti crime, anti hate bill. We don't have nothing. We don't have no reparations. So, you know, like you said, where are we, what, what was really going on in one year? So it's kind of sad to say that we're still in the same place that we were one year after everything that happened. And we've seen all the evidence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, you know, they, yeah. they, what's the last thing? Hold on. The thing, Rob, they want the police, they want to allow the police to not to get sued, right? Something like that. That's the part. Of no, no, no. They, they, they can get sued. It's just that the cities are not going to indemn. The New York City is not going to indemnify them. That means they're not going to pay out for them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The cop is going to basically be losing his personal money and his personal assets. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if he responds wrong. But um, I will say this about the George Floyd incident. Um, we did get a conviction of a police officer. Um, we saw people unite in the way that I basically was like, wow, and um. And we 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 kind of like it. It kind of like opened our eyes to something. Like especially when it came to the police departments, the police department should have came out more outraged about this behavior that this officer displayed, and they didn't do it. So it just goes to show you, no matter what happens when it comes to blue, they're gonna stick to blue no matter what. Mm. Just stay, they stay on cold. Yeah, they're gonna stay yeah. on cold. You know. <laughs> so but we didn't see bitch ass Pat Lynch in a while. He didn't say nothing. Yeah, Pat Lynch didn't come out and say a word. He didn't come out and say a word. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, too, like, that that was, like, you know, besides what happened to George Floyd, that was my second biggest problem is that that was the time for police departments nationwide to condemn what they saw, and they did not do it. They did not do it. Yeah, we didn't see bitch-ass Clark from Wisconsin. He didn't say nothing either. No, no. Well, he, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, he's, he's, a, he's, he's Trump's slave, right? Ain't he a slave? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. Trump's ass. You, I'm yeah. telling you know right. something, uh, D. I um, I was talking to a lady the other day who's Russian, and she's from Moscow. And I was jokingly saying, you know, I want to go over there and visit. I said, I want to go with you. Then I said, now nah, as a black man, I want to go over to Moscow. She's like, what? She's like, we don't have a problem with black people, not like America. And it really, really got me where you know it's like here you're just unwelcome. And like I always said, as a black person here. It's like playing in a mm-hmm. league with no home field advantage. You just mm-hmm. don't have it. And I just think it's one of those things where mm-hmm. we will always have this fight. I just think as long as you have, I, I just don't think the opponent um, ever wants to see equality. And, and and I'm speaking specifically to those who feel that we are opponents to them. You know, mm-hmm. that's not everybody. That's a lot of people that's in true. this country. Oh, that's true. I mean, it, it shows all the time. They were like, it was a story uh, recent. So there's a black young girl one ballot Victorian, they changed the rules so they have now a split one, so they have a white representation. Representation. So, wow. so you're right, Kel. You nailed it on head, man. You nailed it on head, man. So with that mm-hmm. said, 
So the son, a son, the ghostwriter, a late senator says Trump interviewed, intervened to stop the probe and uh, Patriots Spygate scandal. Any thoughts on that? I believe it. <laughs> I, I believe as soon as you said the word Trump, I believe it. <laughs> but it makes it tell you the truth when you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense because that is probably explains why um Mr. Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, is so loyal to Mr. Trump. And maybe Tom Brady it, too, because they mm -hmm. he helped get them out of that um spygate scandal. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Because Trump don't do nothing for nobody unless yeah. it's going to create some sort mm -hmm. of leverage or something he's going to be able to use in the future for himself. So yeah. to me, because because if I'm not mistaken, I think basically that senator is a huge uh, Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, I'm sorry, Philadelphia Eagles fan. Mm. And basically that was one of the teams that they were cheating against, right? Yeah. And um, so basically Trump knew him and they supposedly had made some deal that there was going to be a lot of money coming from Florida if he basically let it go. So it worked out for Trump. He got a couple of other people that were big and important in his pocket. And that's what he does. That's exactly yeah. what he does. That's why I believe it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's scandal is that dude, but it just showed us all like, I mean, Robert Kraft, he liked a little happy ending. Trump, a yeah. little happy ending. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, they're always getting a little toss ups, you know? So, yeah. 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 You know? Oh, we lost. Okay. Yeah. You know, they all run in the same circles, man. That's what they all, you know, they take yeah. care of one another, you know? Mm -hmm. they all, you know, I think uh, I think uh, you know, Trump intervened on behalf of, of Kraft. I think that's what the talk to the Senate was all inspected. I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So yeah, you know, it's it's, it's it, that. But you know, he's been. But it goes to show you, he's been political before he ever. You know, uh, before he ever right. he's, he's, always, you know? he's always been political. I mean, yeah. when you jump when you jump in like the stuff you said about the the Central Park guys to different things before, the, the, he's always been political. He's always been around mm -hmm. those kind of people. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, it's interesting to about the league, about the NFL. The NFL is, you know, as, as much as Trump has always tried to go to war with them, he's in bed with them as well. It's Correct. a league where there's mm -hmm. all billionaires. You got to be a billionaire to be an owner. And then mm -hmm. the other thing is, if you want to become an owner, you have to be voted on by the other owners. Correct. So yeah. now, yeah. You, if you go buy a car, you don't have to vote that somebody lets you have it. You just buy it. But for this, you got to be accepted into this good old boys club. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that's that's why they were able to ban Colin Kaepernick because all the owners stuck together. That's right. That's mm -hmm. why he right. couldn't get a job. Do you know how much the commissioner right. makes? Do you know how much the commissioner makes in NFL? Forty million dollars a year. Forty million dollars. Yeah. Forty million a year. Wow. That's a, that's that's a, that's a player in the history of the league that made forty million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And the commissioner makes forty million. You know why? Because the commissioner works for the owners. Correct. Yeah. He works. Yeah. I was just yeah. about to say that he works for the owners. Yeah, they, he does what the owners need him to do. Yep, yep. Hey, hey Jamie, remind the people they could text us, man. Show them the number they could text us. Any questions, anything they want to say to us, Ron? Is there it is right there? We got six four six four five five one five nine nine. Text the brothers or let's chop it up. We love it. We love the comments. Good, bad, or ugly. We just take take them all. So we love them. And also do the comments on YouTube and Facebook. We love them all. Um. CNN, man, they got this this film coming out, the Dream uh, Dreamland, a uh, Dreamland, the Burning of Black Wall Street. I think it airs tomorrow at 10 p.m. I believe it is tomorrow. Monday, Monday, Monday. Monday? Yeah, okay, Monday. sorry, Monday. I'm ahead of the schedule. Monday yeah. at 10 p.m. On is it Monday? It's um, Monday the 31st, I think, because I think that's the anniversary. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's airing on Monday. It's on CNN. Check it out. Anything anybody want to talk about Black Wall Street? I know LeBron's doing something with Black Wall Street too, or like a few things that happened with Black Wall Street. Well, LeBron is the um executive producer of this along, one. Yeah, of this one, okay. along with um Maverick Carter, his boy Maverick Carter, um, the guy he does a lot of business with. Yeah, he, do, he basically runs LeBron's um business on um, works and behind the scenes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they they executive produced it. But um the thing is, it's definitely I feel it should be a must watch. It's something that we should watch so we can understand history of what happened when we were on top. You know what I mean? We had we had a thriving community. People had their own businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody sold to each other. It basically showed the power of the dollar. And they started seeing that, you know, black people were becoming wealthy. So that's why they they burnt it down. They didn't want black people getting ahead of them. Mm -hmm. But everybody tune in and watch it. I definitely say it's a must watch. Very uh, yeah. informative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think MSNBC was in um, out there in Tulsa today. I was watching Tiffany Cross. 
Mm. Pretty, her pretty ass out there doing that shit. <laughs> man, that story is amazing to me, man. There was a uh, there Wait, was a, hold on, hold on, Derek. I don't want to cut you off. Is she pretty or just her ass is pretty? Nah, nah. Listen to this. I follow on Instagram. So when she takes her makeup, she's a you know regular sister, but she's a pretty sister. And I like okay. and she's smart. I, I like just wanted smart. to clarify that. I just want to oh, 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 no, she's pretty face. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You no, said her I'm pretty ass. I'm not trying to get banned. I'm not gonna meet yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. He looked at my ass back in 30 uh, 1986 <laughs> or something like that. I don't want that shit. Yeah, but go ahead, Derek. Sorry about that. Y'all messed me up, man. I was there. I gotta look, I gotta look at Christmas <laughs> Cross now. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> No, I want no sexual harassment. Listen, you know, back in the day when you used to hump, back in elementary school, somebody said he humped me in fifth grade. But, <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want none of that smoke from back in, back in eighty four. You know what? I'm telling you, this thing is the last Saturday yeah. show. We just got canceled on Saturdays anyway. It's just, wow. It's just, <laughs> grand opening, grand opening. Yeah, listen, listen, man, listen, man. Element, it's like, that was the, most, uh, the safest sex you ever had back then, man. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no, ch- there was no child support involved in that. Just dry humping and you going about your business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 so yeah. What school did y'all go to? Yo, they- I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't want to say. You know what? Yeah, I, should- I got it, dude. Yeah, I, I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have said that, knowing that now. People can text in. Now there's going to be people that's going to text in saying back when I, in the days. Oh, when I come was, on, Jamie. Yeah. I can get one of those, man. Not yeah, for yeah. <laughs> Not for that, Jamie. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. But, uh, um, now, but, but it was 107. Back to the point. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I think, originally they, uh, uh, there was this uh, woman. She was, uh, she's 107 years old, and she went before, I guess, Congress and made a testimony on uh, what happened. Uh, testified uh, on the on on the happenings of the Tulsa race riot, you know, yeah. and um and I, I guess she was uh, that would make us six years old. Or something she was like seven that. years, seven, 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 seven years, seven, seven, years yeah. seven years old. Seven years old. Yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah, you know what's so messed up because the thing is, all the land that the black people have, the city of Tulsa owns now, right? So the the value of those properties that they either, either give those people that land back. Or give them what they should be owed with the people that had that own that land and what it's worth now. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's it's just wrong. Correct. Everybody else can get what the hell they ask for. Asian people can get for it. Gays can get. Jews can get it. And when it comes to something about being black, it's always like a pause. Like, oh, let's wait and see. Let's study. Yeah. Why do we always yeah. gotta wait? Why yeah. do we always have to wait? You know. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that land is worth a lot of money now. Oh hell and yeah! Basically, the land was just basically taken from those people yeah. after the riot. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I keep trying to say that's the first form of the, uh, the uh, terrorism. We talk about oh, ever got bombed from the sky? No, back then, black people got bombed from the sky. They that's dropped right. bombs from the sky. That's so right. And the literal air not, force came yeah, in. It, yeah, it was not the world trade. Let's keep it a buck. And then the thing about that history that was kept away from us until 1970, so about 50 years. Correct. Before yeah, somebody, right. before some people started studying, and we had black journalists started talking about these kind of things. So, oh, me calling was back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's messed up. They be hating on me, man. They think, think I say too much, man. <laughs> or, nah, they D, on me, man. D, keep being you, man. Don't let nobody Thank take you, man. Yeah, don't censor me, yeah. man. Yeah, it's, 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 let's chop it up, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Ain't nobody censoring in the bush. He got the he got the sword You know these stuff. He got the breaking. <laughs> Listen, man, Chris, Cuomo, Chris Cuomo started cursing in 2020. Everybody started cursing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan, Dylan Roof, the guy that killed all the, the nine people out in Charleston, is uh, Dylan. Dylan. I'm sorry, Dylan Roof. Dylan Roof is coming yeah. out nine people in Charleston. He's trying to get his thing to overturn his death sentence. So, what do you guys think? I, I, think it's, I think it's a bad job on the inmates that's in there because I didn't think yeah, my man would yeah. be around no more. Yeah. That, like, everybody can interpret that statement in any way they want. All I'm saying is this. I didn't think he'd be able to appeal at this point. Well, you got to realize something, too, Kelvin. There's a lot of white supremacists in jail, so they, they'll they protect them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're going to hold them down. Because, you know, me personally, they're trying to say that um he his um his state of mind is in question. Nah, his state of mind ain't in no question. He planned that. He, 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 he premeditate, premeditated it and basically said that he was doing this so he could start a race war. So, I mean, I, he's in, he's, I, I think he's thinking things through. He planned yeah. it. He had thought about it. He did it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. He's he's 21 years old. He got a whole lot of time to stay in jail. You know That's what I'm it. saying? So, I, I, I agree. And this is what I would do. There's, there's two things that I would change. Let me run the penal system, first of all. Yeah, yeah. That's how we do it. Better waste all this money in court. 
No, you let me run it. Let, let I, me listen, run it. I run. You run part, one part, I run the other part. This is what I'm saying. I would do like this, Rod. You kill somebody's family or whatever like that, or somebody, we're going to not have a case. We're going to put you in a room with all their family members. You get out that room, you freak. All right? We're not going to go through yeah. the court. That's it. You get out that room, they're freak. Now, now, the other thing I got for, for world peace, for wars, no more sending boys and girls to, to war. If you got another beef with another country, your leader fight their leader. Straight yeah, up, one go. on one. That's it. Your leader. So just elect somebody that can throw their hands. Your leader gonna fight our leader. Whoever wins has won the war. Sick of kids get dying and being killed for some mm -hmm. foolishness. That's it. Not you the president. You want to go to war? Good. You roll and you beat their president down. If you don't, then you lost and we lost. And that's hey, it. I think I think we had a good one with Barack, man. I think he beat me. I'm telling you, you know, that Joe I, Biden I, I, right now he can't shoot no joints. Nah, Joe nah, Biden nah, can't shoot nah, no joints. Nah. Now, see, this 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 is where you gotta think. Who would you hire? I I want to be president. I would put Ron Artest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Test might get my Ron Test might get that because he, he always want that smoke. So I might get I might get Ron Test to be my guy, man. No, nah, what I want to do is Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown might be <laughs> right uh, nah, I want to I want to pick somebody out in the system and say, listen, if you take care of this, we're gonna set you free. There's gonna be some brothers that's gonna be in there fighting really oh, hard. Oh hell oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no doubt, yeah. no question, no but question. The thing yeah. is, I do. I want to run. A, I want to run a penal system too, especially with um with Dylan Roof is. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even take a lunch break. I'd be on his ass <laughs> all day, all day, all day. I, and they say, yo, well, you gotta tired, do. Right? Yeah, I wouldn't even get tired. I'd be in his ass all day. Yeah, man. I mean, remember they got to um Jeffrey Dahmer. Remember they killed him with a sink, yeah. right? A, a toilet yeah. seat or something. They killed him. Someone in the bathroom. They killed yo, him. A brother. A brother killed Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, yeah. They killed mm -hmm. him. So. Dylan needs to get that in South Carolina, man. I mean, I can't believe he's even a, a pit, but you know, yeah, he, has you, his, like, he has his rights to appeal. He was, he was a white supremacist. I'm telling you, there's a lot of um, white supremacists in jail. They have groups in there, you know, oh, they yeah. taking oh, care of him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but they, but they also can, the, when you get certain groups, they can fuck your ass at the same time. Like, they're favor for a favor. Keep it in the okay, box. Run the oh. scroll. Run the scroll across the bottom. <laughs> That's right. There you go. There you go. There you go. I, see, there you go. I, I see how this Saturday is there going to go. You know, last Saturday going out with a bang, man. Yeah, going out wow. with a bang tonight. No. Nah. <laughs> so, all right. In Texas, handguns allowed without permits or background checks. I know I saw my man Max. I don't know if he's still on there. I want to see if Max chime in and see how that feels. I saw him. Like the match, you write about mood out in the Philly. We didn't, I didn't forget about mood how they did them too, those people. But while yeah. I'm hanging up with Rodney, since you're a cop, I'm gonna go to you first. What's your used thoughts? To be. On that? Used to used be. be. Sorry, suit used to be used to be. long time ago. Long time. Well, ago. this is this is a political <laughs> thing, right? And I don't know if you realize the NRA is obviously involved in it because they need money, they're losing money. Um, you know, the Democrats is coming after them, so they basically want to create a state where basically everybody could just have a gun and be like the okay corral up in that motherfucker. People just be walking around with guns, shooting each other, and nothing too. I wouldn't want to be a cop in that state. You know what I mean? Mm. Because the thing is, everybody's got a gun walking around, and then every time there's a problem, somebody's getting shot. That is just insane. But they they want to create this, you know, people that feel that they're going to lose their second Second Amendment um, rights because the so-called Democrats are going after their Second Amendment rights, and they just want to create this state that's like a big sanctuary for gun lovers to go and for the, N the NRA to make millions of dollars. And that's what that, that's all it's about. That's all it's mm. about. Mm -hmm. But if I, I wouldn't want to live there. And another thing too, what you're going to have is you're going to have white people with guns shooting black people. That's what you're going to have in, there, on, in Texas. Well, you got that now. So. Well, that's yeah. what I was saying. I was like, I don't know how we're going to get it. Different. And another thing, too, you're going, to have more, you're going to have more mass shootings, too, because all the kooks and the nuts are going to be going to Texas and just walking around with guns. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's but true. Wait, do you think they will change once if black people start popping a whole bunch of white folks? Then they'll then they'll stop the gun. Then they'll change and, the and, rules. And, and the Mexicans that's out there in Texas? Yeah, they'll change the rules. That's they'll what I understand. Things. Do the gun thing like you do city bike in Manhattan, where you need credentials to go get it. That's it. So I know that if, it, if you shoot that gun, it was by that person that owned it or rented it or registered it or something like that. All this technology, why you can't stop guns from shooting? That should be, you know, a technological <laughs> thing. You know, that's what I'm like, in other words, everything's computerized except guns. Guns, you can just get, start capping regardless. Anything else, you can't use. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Make sure you control that. That's what I mean. You got drones. You got all these different things that that technology controls, except guns, firearms. That's it. 
Carol, that's a good, you just made a good point. I'm really thinking, do you need more documentation to get a city bank in New York than you need, than you're going to need to get a gun in, in Texas? Texas. Yeah, that's, that's, what I'm that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, Basically, so, they're going to say you need nothing in Texas. You're just going to be able to go in the store and buy a gun. I literally walked past a dude trying to, he checked in the city bikes to see if somebody left one out, right? Yeah. You can't, he can't get the bike unless he got a credit card. Correct. If he gets that bike with a credit card, we know he's the one that got it. Do the guns like that. Oh, That's what man. I'm saying. Uh, you think you're violating? So, so, but think about this, Max. I'm going to go to the of Max. If, if arguments in parking lots, malls, everybody's coming back out, do you think now people might just pop off like, you know what? I'm not arguing no more. I'm just shoot. Correct. So, I, yeah. I just wanna, like, some people, please. you talk about no background checks. Correct. I got relatives that I would not want. To come to a family event without a background check. You know certain people are <laughs> on <un -trained. laughs> I'm about to do a family event and I'm having metal detectors. I don't know what it is. Can you imagine going to a cookout in Texas and alcohol is there and everybody got a gun? Oh my god. And it's hot. And it's hot. And it's hot. Alcohol, heat, and natives equal tragedy. I'm no, sorry. Right, no. equal, That's, we got, it's, it's certain drinks. casualties. Certain drinks. Nutcracker drinks. Yeah, <laughs> a, bas a basketball game and new hip hop music and new ports and, not, and new ports. I don't care if it's water, the natives gonna start capping, and that's just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, that, you know, you know, the governor of um Texas is a a Trump a Trump lead, a Trump follower. Whoa. So that's yeah. what this is all about. They basically want to create a state that where basically they'll never lose that. The Democrat, the Republican, I'm sorry, the Republicans will never lose that state because it's loaded with gun lovers. And then they'll just wow. basically. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they got yeah. that now. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. It's going to be some strange times. We'll see what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing, if they did this, if they smoke more weed, like my man Jay Z about to bring in, <laughs> giving us to bring nine thousand pounds of cannabis together, I think everybody be on chill out mode. No nutcrackers, yeah. smoke a lot of weed. What y'all think? I can't. I can't even imagine what nine hundred thousand pounds of marijuana would even look like. It's got to be bigger than your house. Yeah, nine hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot. Did you say nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred thousand pounds of marijuana that he oh, his, his company is going to produce. Yeah, my God, what, I can't even imagine. That's a that's a forest, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, man, I know he's doing his seeds. He's planting forest, yeah. man. Yo, know, that's amazing to me. I mean, yeah. you know, it's amazing where we're going with regard to prohibition. You know what I mean? When you start thinking about the idea of prohibition, you know, just you know, um, we just just became legal, you know, and um, you know, but alcohol is the real killer if you really want to think about it. You know, you get a whole bunch of, I think someone said to me once, he said, you get a whole bunch of angry people. I think it was Mike Tyson, as a matter of fact, when he was talking about mushrooms. The same thing could, could, could apply to, 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 uh, to uh, marijuana is that you get, you know, 10 people who are upset with each other. You know, you give them alcohol and, you know, they want to kill each other. You give them, in this case, you say you give them mushrooms, you know, everybody wants to be friends. I think you could probably say the same thing about marijuana, you know. Um, mm. I don't think it's quite, you know, it's not quite as violent, you know. So, I mean, it's just amazing that it took this long for us to get here, but um, and, and he's making a play. You know, it's it's legal. It's, it's he's ready to go, and he's and he's and he's well positioned. So he's making a play, man. Yeah. yeah. But this, no. he, he's gonna be set up in California. This is all in California. This country is falling off. Let's move to Ghana. Who's down? I know. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew D was down. Yo, we're up. Let's move wow. to Ghana, y'all. That's the <laughs> one over there. We gonna roll over there. I can't wait. I can't wait to visit the motherland. I mean, I, I am so amped to go, man. Um, yeah. yeah, but this, listen, man, as long as Jay-Z invite me over to one of the smoke parties, man, I'm good. Right <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I remember my mother used to be like, oh, y'all there smoking that weed. You're doing this. You know, you know what I'm saying? But now she's <laughs> on board, man. She's 80 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. back in the days when you were young? And they said, hey, you are you standing on the corner smoking that riffer? Yeah, riffer. The kids, the riffer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what happened to what happened to Riffer, man? What happened to Riffer? <laughs> There's no name cigarettes, man. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> funny <laughs> cigarettes or riffer. It smells, it smells oh, remember, better. Remember, 40, remember 42nd Street, they walking down the aisle, Chiba Chiba, Chiba Chiba. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, I mean, it was a different smelling weed better than that. Different type of weed, yeah. Yeah, the shit they got nowadays, man. Ugh. I can't, I can't, I can't stand the loud. I can't stand that. The one I can't stand the most is that skunk. 
that shit just smelled too much like asshole for me. But anyhow, <laughs> um, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we, we just gonna yell everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. oh, man. I'm also my part. Here we go. Kanye West wants the Yeezys. Saying, Jamie, dude, he got new Yeezys coming out. He wanted them to be $20. Man, that is. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Look at them shit. You know, them, them shit should be free with sprinkles on it. That's what that's it. That, that's it. Yeah, you shit should, should be giving out money to wear them shit. Them yeah. shit is crazy. They look like crocs with a back on them. Yeah, you know what the thing is? I, you know, I know I think differently a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, I think Kanye be testing. How much he can sell bullshit? Yeah, I, I really be right. thinking he'd be doing that. I, I, I think that he says, "Yo, let's just put out the craziest shit and see if they buy it." See, 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 it. You know who I blame? I blame everybody who didn't buy the Marberries. If we'd have bought the Marberries, we wouldn't have to worry about this. See what I'm saying? I bought a pair of Marberries. No, so I, I, had a, I had two pairs of Marberries. Yeah, yeah, me too. I bought one to play softball, to play around, to walk, go to the work on the dirt. And I and I bought a pair of, when I go on vacation in another country and I just leave them shit there. You found it. Hey, found hey, it. I'm giving them up. I support it. Yeah. How much? How much was this again? Thirteen dollars. Thirteen freaking dollars. I had two pair. I had a running pair and I had the basketball. I wonder, I heard they were comparable to like you know. They were. They were comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the, 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 the fake Air Force ones back then. They were yeah, like, yeah. They, yeah. They, that's the ones I had. I had the Air yeah. Force ones and I had the ones that looked like running sneakers. You gotta yeah. give Steph credit for that. That was a, that was a good look. But it yeah, goes yeah. kind of cultural to the, to the culture of school and having stuff everybody can't have. Yeah, I'll be totally honest with you. That store that he was selling them in, I actually missed that store. That store had oh, a lot Stephen of Barry. Oh, Stephen Barry. Was that the one in uh, Madison? Yeah, yeah, that was Stephen Barry. Barry. Yeah, no, they had one. They had one in um on the source on, mall. The source mall, correct okay, on Old Country okay. Road. That's where the yeah. Stephen Barry was. And, and, and Venus, Venus had a line that was kind of cute. She had correct. a woman's line that was kind of nice. It was kind of yeah, cute. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. And, and listen, when you have kids, when you have kids, that shit. Stephen Barry was the shit. I don't give yeah, man. You can go with clothes in there too, man. Yeah. You can yeah. go with Stephen Barry and get a whole wardrobe for one hundred and six dollars. Word up! Have a whole kid be straight for the whole school yeah. year. Whole school year. <laughs> Word up! That's what he did. Only thing I give to Kanye, he's trying to. Um, I know he created these through using three D printing and stuff like that. I think he's trying to educate kids on that. So I give him props for that part of it. So that's what. But otherwise, the look I'm not wearing. All this stuff look like zombie land type shit. This clothes yeah. I was into yeah. it look like Walking Dead. I'm not wearing dead people looking clothes. It's just not my style. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not with it. I'm not. I'm not. I love some, you know, man. I like to support black, but then Kanye ain't really black to me. Like you run around, yeah, with yeah, that. yeah. I can't fuck with that shit. Okay. No, I can't mess with that either. And like I told you, I think like he's at a place where he's such a big brand. That basically he could sell dog shit and people will buy oh, yeah. it. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? And that's how I see it. Like you just come, you're not, you're not, it's not creative. It looks, it looks crazy. Like, you mm -hmm. know, I don't know. Maybe But see, maybe. Rod, that's what they try to do. In other words, Kanye feel he's so creative. The problem is you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That, the, the shoe <laughs> is you. You yeah. ain't caught up. Right. You right. Yeah. Get with it. right. If you want yeah. to the problem. You the problem. There you go. I'm right. the problem. Yeah, you well, you know what? Yeah. I guess I'm gonna be the problem because I don't like this. <laughs> Yeah, they look like Crocs. She said, yeah, they look like Flocks. They look like Crocs. I got Crocs. Yeah, Crocs look better than those. Crocs look better than those. That's what it is. They just as confused <laughs> as he is. Yeah. <laughs> they just confused. They man. don't know what it wants to be. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I never was a Kanye fan, man, ever. I never liked none of it. I, I, was just, I didn't like dude. His music was dope. I think the first album, second out, but I was never. Okay, after admit, the Stacey Dash song was interesting. Video song. Um, to yeah. that was uh, oh, yeah. That was a yeah. dope song. That was a dope song. You know, yeah, when, I yeah. when I worked at JFK, I saw her um, at Baggage one time. And I was actually going to go say something to her. And I had a client back when I worked in, when I was in college. So. That would be so disappointing, bro. You it would have been. Would it would have been because she's been like, first of all, you black. Don't say nothing. Yeah, don't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. She would have yeah. probably screamed, "Don't you gonna try to rob her?" Oh, you know, buddy, I ran. <laughs> I spoke to Vivica Fox once in mm. there, and you had to see. She was two of her girlfriends. You had to see the way she looked at me. She looked at me like I don't already got played out by one dude that was broke. You don't you dare come over here. Don't approach Vivica Fox. I right. saw I saw an interview with Vivica Fox where she talked about why she divorced that guy. 
and it was and it was about money it was about her saying that she didn't want to take care of him and it goes back to what i tell guys all the time i said a man could take care of a woman a whole a whole life but a woman only want to take care of you maybe for about a month she give you about a month before you get your shit together. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know the dude, the dude that wants to be in that position. It's just a bad. I, yeah, you know, I've yeah, seen it. Yeah. And I've seen it bad before. But I have to say, I saw the same interview, and I want to say this. This is my personal feeling. Anybody out there who's considering plastic surgery, just have a consultation. Think yeah. about it. Pray about it. <laughs> Kelvin, I know we are going with that. I'm not saying these two things are related. I'm just saying yeah. for some reason. That just came to my mind. I had to bring it up, and so before you do it, ask them to project the before and after. Okay. Yeah, right, right, I also right. want to say, listen, we have a finite time to be young, to mm -hmm. be who we are. Once that season is over, it's over. you can't overextend it. I got to yeah. admit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with what Rob was talking about. I just had to bring it up. You know. No, no, no. I agree with you, Kyle. I know exactly what you're talking about. Some people don't take. Take well the plastic surgery. Everybody doesn't react to plastic yeah. surgery the same. You know what I'm saying? So you know you're taking a chance when you're going under that knife like that. And so sorry, yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> sorry about that, man. Sorry. Yeah, I wonder if they can recognize themselves sometimes. Who? Like mm. certain people, you know, uh Derek was just talking about Lil' Kim. And I look at Lil' Kim, Lil' Kim was cute. And now um I'm just wondering, I, I just wonder sometimes they feel like, you know what? If I could do this again, would I do it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to be, be foul. I'm just saying it's like this. There's some people that's just beautiful. And um, it, it's nothing better than the person that that grows older gracefully. I know we all want to resist it. We all want to fight it and stuff like that. But that's a season for that. That's just it. There's a season. There's a shelf life. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. one day, you know, you was that fly person. And one day you're going to be, you know, the mother or father of that fly person. That's just all it is. It, Yo. It's a cycle. Father Tom is undefeated. Man, undefeated. Is. Man, it is. undefeated. You, don't let him get mad. No, nah, if he get <laughs> mad, <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of people that he definitely got mad. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> but it, the thing is, too, like you know, it's like we can look at um, little Kim and say, yeah, she was cute, she was a nice looking girl. But the thing is, little Kim has to accept that about herself. And that that was the issue with her, man. Yeah. Why she went up under in the first place, man? She always yeah. had. She took it too far. Ideas. You know, they, they asked Joan Rivers one time. They said, Joan Rivers, why did you have so much plastic surgery? She's like, you you guys always like younger women. And I'm saying, but Joan Rivers, you was tore up when you was young. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, like, like, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand. Like, you could have saved all that money. That's what I yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't getting no better, man. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The remix was worse than the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I'm not going to let the enemy use me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh man, listen, Jamie, let's take a talk first commercial break. We bring it out guests. My brother Sanford Green at the commercial. Yeah.
Yo, our next guest is my brother. I know this guy for oh, damn man, we can know over thirty years, and he's what a he's a cartoonist, illustrator for a cartoon for Marvel, DC Comics. He's been doing this for eighteen years. He likes on I worked on Iron Fist, Power Man, he reshaped those, and uh, Black Panther. Work, I think it's called the Ennis Award. This is my man, my brother, and he got a film going to be being put together with some big names very, very soon. I love this dude so, so much. This is my dude, my brother, Sanford Green. Peace, Sanford. Peace. What's up, Sanford? Oh, dude, Peace. Oh, brother. Oh, man, he's straight. He's, man. And, yeah, and, man. It's my, and he's my frat brother. This is, a guy, yeah. this is my frat brother. This is my dude, man. I love this guy, man. Go yeah, mob, baby. You know how we do it out there, man. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What I'm saying, how you feeling today, man? First of all, how you feeling, man? Oh man, I tell you what, man. Um, I was boogieing and trying to get back here so that I could uh, be a part of this, man. So uh, I'm doing good, but I'm also like, I gotta settle down just a second, you know. Yeah, I gotta go, man. I know it's a Saturday. We, we, you know, we caught you the holiday weekend. Probably better weather out there in South Carolina than it is here in New York, right? Got good, good weather. Oh yeah, man. It's uh, I, I, honestly, <laughs> I thought it was going to. Uh, there was going to be a bad storm coming through, but uh, for some reason, it uh, God said not today. So um, it's beautiful out here right now. All right, that's what's up, man. So Sanford, man, I was telling people like you know, you wrote for Marvel, you wrote uh, uh, drove for Marvel, uh, DC, man. So what was one of your favorite characters that you ever put together and worked on? Well, honestly, um, I think you mentioned it earlier. Um, working on Luke Cage, man. Um, when I was a kid, that was the first character that I saw that had my skin color, right? Yeah. Um, well, technically it was the Falcon, but um, I only saw him in like, uh, kind of like when he was a part of the Avengers, but he wasn't like featured as much back then. Um, and I wasn't aware of his uh, Captain America um, team ups. Um, I just knew about the event, you know, you're six, seven years old, you see comics, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know the of the history. So I only saw him for a brief moment, but uh, uh, Power Man, AKA Luke Cage was the first character that I saw that really, um, he had his own book, um, Luke Cage. And, and you know, in the South, that's that's an anomaly to some degree. Wow, a whole, you know, a character, uh, comic character that actually has his own comic book series. Um, that uh, floored me, man. So, um, getting a chance to work on him kind of a full circle story getting getting a chance to work on him uh, back in 2007 16 17 and 18 um was kind of like uh you know a dream come true so that's uh that's that's my that's my guy right there man an iron mm -hmm. fist too, man, but uh definitely uh luke cage Sam, Sam, yeah. let me ask you this I, you know when i was a kid i didn't see a lot of adults get into comic books. It was a thing that we did with our friends and kids and things like that. But now it looks like, you know, you got, I think it's called Comic-Con. You got all the, I mean, you got a lot of adults. The generations are obsessed. I think these movies sell, outsell anything in Hollywood, the animation and things like that. Has it, has it been something that has taken on a new audience or is it just the people that grew up with this have become adults now and they've carried it across, you know, the, the timeline of their lives? Um. I think it's all of that, man. It's um, I think because it was something that was a part of our culture, you know, when, when we were kids. Now we are in the positions to make those things happen. I mean, even something to to uh, some degree, the the hip hop culture that that that's kind of where it started. It really started to take uh, shape in terms of the notoriety right around the time when we were teenagers. So, you know, fast forward, we're now, you know, people that are in these positions, uh, whether it be as a fan or as some, you know, person um, that's in the industry, we grew up with those things, we're influenced by those things. So um, it, 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 it kind of, it created the, zeit the, uh, the zeitgeist for, for this time. So even if you didn't grow up in it, because it's what's happening now, you're, you're into it. Yeah. Stanford, I need you to help me out, man. I'm definitely feeling you. I was a big Luke Cage fan. And to prove that, um, I'm going to take it back a little further than you. Okay. I remember I remember when Luke Cage was hero for hire. 
Hero for Hire. Yep. Wow. Right. Now, I was a big <laughs> Luke Cage fan. And another thing, we might need to talk off the um, off the show <laughs> because I have the first edition of Hero for Hire all the way up until we teamed up with Iron Fist. Right. And um, I have that in my garage. So we might need to talk about how much that stuff is worth right now. Um, you know, if, if you got it in your garage, you might want to get it out of the garage, man. <laughs> no, they're all it's all well packaged. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. No, it's all well packaged. Each 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 issue is in a plastic or whatever. I spoke to one guy, I think he kind of was trying to rip me off for the issues, but um, <laughs> maybe me and you need to talk. But the thing is, I was in the comic books probably from the time that I was probably maybe eight or nine years old, and you're 100 percent right. There wasn't a lot of heroes that looked like us, you know what I mean? Um, and then the thing is, when they did look like us, they was like, you know, Hero for Hire, he was in the hood fighting pimps and drug dealers and stuff like that, you know? Right, right. But um, I was I was pretty impressed when you talked about um, Luke Cage and um, Power Man, yeah. you know? Yeah, so, no doubt. I mean, uh, kind of a cool story. Um, when the show launched, um, they used um, some of the storylines that um, I was a part of in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, the, a lot of the things you just shared um, about the tropes of him fighting pimps and hustlers, and yeah. you know, um, they kind of gave a nod to that. We did the same thing in our book, where it was kind of like, you know, he's more than that. As a matter yeah. of fact, our story is again a lot of what took place in the actual show, where he's a lot more mature. He's not all the, you know, the jive talk and the yeah, correct. You know, Again, all those tropes that were, you know, um, a part of that time period. Honestly, you know, it was the black exploitation era. So, mm -hmm. and you had uh, creators at that time um, who were all white males, and so they 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 only saw the peripheral, you know, image of of these characters. So they, you know, they went off of what they thought was connecting. You know, and to some degree it did, but yeah. you know, again, it was, it, it was stereotypical type of stuff, right? You know, basically, mm -hmm. you know, yes, that's why we got Power Man with the uh, the tiara and the disco shirt. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I I I, I remember, man, back in the days, just um. You know, collecting comics as a kid, man, and you know we was really serious into it, man. You know, you'd have like the plastic, and you had the little cardboard, and you, mm -hmm. you know, you take the whole thing it was like a whole, almost a, I don't know, a ritual to it, man. You know, and it was like it was serious, man. It was serious business, and you know, and as we, in our, and, and as we fast forward to now, you see a lot of those old storylines come into the movies and everything, and you, you know what I mean, and you like see it now, like right now. Well, maybe not right now, but I remember when they started hitting them, hitting the, hitting the, hitting the, uh, the screen. It was like, yes, these are all the storylines that we really, really wanted to see. You know, these are all this is how we really wish we could we could have had it. You know, we always wanted a, a superhero live action movie. You know, right? Um, I'm just kind of wondering now, though, like, um, how much uh, do you think that the what's going on in the comics moving forward? Because now we're kind of caught up, and you know, how much of going moving forward? How much of the comic books? going to influence the movies, or I should say the movies influence the comic books right now. Is there going to be any crossover, you know? Um, I, and I'm, I'm, maybe we're looking forward to a time where maybe we have a story off that happens in the comics and then it kind of transforms into the movies and maybe back the other way, you know what I mean? Like how, you know, what, what, what do you think the, uh, what do you think the synergy is going to be looking like, man? You know? Um, well, right now, man, uh, truth be told, Marvel is, is kind of showing um the entire industry how this is going to probably take shape here in, in the next five ten years where the films are going to dictate what happens in the books right now um it, it's a little bit of both right now where they have all the material from the comics from all this history and that's their source material so they take that and then they bring it into the, the films but then they altered some of the characters in the films. Like um, I'll just use, um, um, oh gosh, uh, Nick Fury with Samuel Jackson um, in the comic. He's a white guy. Right. Um, yeah. And in the film, him being uh, Sam Jackson, it, he became so popular that it um, it trans transitioned to the actual book. Um, they're trying to do what they call ret retconning, where they, they basically take the, the history that was already there and they plug in something else that 
oh, you didn't know that, you know, Nick Fury had an affair with this black woman back in the 60s and had this kid. So boom. So so they can keep what was already there, but also kind of splinter off and give you whatever is happening in the film. So you, you're you going to see a lot more of that. It's, it's a lot of back and forth right now. But, the, you know, because these movies are starting to, you know, become TV shows and all, you know, all these other different uh, venues, um, a lot of that is going to dictate what happens in the books. Like um, Sang Chi just got men- um, yeah. showed the, the trailer, and now they're doing a, a new series based on Sang Chi. And it's mm-hmm. more than likely going to stream, it's going to um, stream from uh, what happens in the film. Stanford, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Okay, so years ago, I used to have a parallel when I was a kid. I would think like uh, comic books and professional wrestling. It was always fundamentally a good guy versus a bad guy, a good character versus a bad character. But I'm noticing now society has evolved and changed a lot. Where there are certain people that just root for the bad guy. There are certain people that just see. And so I think these characters have evolved in some cases. Like when I was a kid, I, I, I was into Batman and Robin, right? I don't even know what happened to Robin, but but Batman, <laughs> Batman seems like he has some type of this. If you look at the movies, he seems like a dark character now. Oh, Batman yeah. seems like a sociopath. I don't know what Batman is doing. Batman used to fight crime. I don't know who. What has happened to some of these characters? Has 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 society kind of shaped them, or has has they you know something happened where they have decided to like just change and appeal to a different group? Because it's blurred a little bit. I I think they made them human. I think they like they everybody has a like good like everybody's not a hundred percent what you know always correct. I think they they want them, they want, you say they want them to be flawed. I think they, I think they everybody has flaws. Nobody's perfect. So I think technology well, may have changed too because Superman and them were doing stuff and when one of the dudes used to have a watch where he could talk into it. Well we can really do that stuff now. So <laughs> it's like I guess they gotta kinda change, you know, I guess with the times. Oh, yeah. Dick, Tracy, Dick Tracy had a watch, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. You know, um, you guys know I'm not a fan of Batman at all. I, I Batman was a guy oh, wow. I like the least. Yeah. You know why? Because the thing is. Batman bought himself into being a superhero. Yeah, white superhero. Privilege. He had white privilege. <laughs> That's why I didn't like Batman. And Batman didn't have no powers. And I felt that anybody could just walk up to Batman and just punch him in his face and get away with yeah, it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that how I would look at it. That was his power. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Sanford. What do you want to say, Sanford? I was going to say to to actually to, to all of you guys, then you might want to look at um, DC just put out um, a series um, based on Black Lightning and his experience in the Justice League as okay. a black man, the only black character in the 70s. It's pretty fascinating. John Ridley, if you guys know John, he did uh, I think he did the screenplay for uh, 12 Years a Slave and mm. a few others and um, he's writing Batman now actually. So wow. <laughs> he's, he's talking about a lot of those things that you're, you're speaking on and he has Black Lightning he, well, the first series that he did over at DC, it was about um, um, Black Lightning's experience as a, as a Justice League member and how he didn't want to be a part of the team at first because he, you know, he, he was a black man in the seventies and he understood, you know, even then what that what that looks like the dynamics and you know how his his lack of privilege wouldn't afford him everything that the other uh, you know characters had. It's pretty fascinating. Um, I'll send you guys the link to it. I forgot the name of it, um, but it's pretty. It's a pretty fascinating story. Mm, mm. So like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you were talking about the flawed characters, and that's exactly what it is now. It's it's more about it, those characters are more interesting. I mean, Superman to me. I mean, you talk about Batman. I think Batman is the most fascinating character because of that privilege. He he knows. He has that privilege and he is so he's so conscious of it that it's it's torturous to him. So this is why he, you know, I'm kind of giving you a a bit of what John Ridley is doing in the Batman story. Now, he he feels like that's why he has to do so much. Like he has to be that that guy that's always or the hero that's always there no matter what. No matter how big the obstacle, no matter no matter how you know um, um, 
uh, uh, the, the task is too, it seems insurmountable. He, he's, he has to be there. And that's that, you know, just, just call it what it is, white guilt in some sense, but they're using it from a hero's perspective of how he's just torn, you know, he had all this this power, this money, his family, the Waynes, they, they pretty much run Gotham, or mm -hmm. at least own everything in Gotham. He's aware of all of this, and that's been torturing him for forever, you know, so he feels obligated. Now, Superman, on the other hand, is the, he's the one that's like completely clueless to his privilege. Now, him being an alien, technically, being an alien, it, um, he can identify with that, but he has the skin color of of a white man, and so his virtues are so he's he's such a um, um, his moral code is is so high that he can't see past the fact that his skin color is what people see initially. He thinks his moral code is what's going to allow him to be this hero to everyone. But everyone may not necessarily see him as that hero simply because of his skin color. So he's, I'm giving you a bunch of stories that's that's being done right now in the DC comics. So you know, um, they're trying to make him flawed too. That's where they're going. They're trying to make uh, Superman just as flawed as Batman. Is, um, is he the most famous? I, I would assume that Superman is the most famous character ever, and I would assume that the Joker is the most famous vi villain. Is that is that right, or that's just? That's just a guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would, yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, you know, Joker is the only one so far that I know of that's got his own film. Got his yeah, own, okay. yeah, they got so, his yeah, own yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, there's, there's yeah. the more coming. I mean, you got technically going back to the flawed thing. It's the anti-hero, I guess, is probably the better choice. Yeah, yeah. Where the, these guys like the Punisher, Venom, mm -hmm. Dan, Mag Magneto. You know, Magneto, all those guys are, they're, you know, they can, they kind of, they're gray. They're not yeah, they're, they're like, back and forth. They're back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, so, uh, Sanford, speaking of, um, like, DC, to me, Marvel makes the better movies. DC storylines are just falls off, and they, I don't know why, how they always miss, miss the point. I don't, I don't get it. Aquaman was probably the best one. I thought he had the worst superhero powers ever, but somehow... <laughs> You know, except for it was a big Indian one, the Chief. They used to grow big back oh, in the day. Apache, 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 yeah, Apache, yeah, yeah. Apache, yeah. They're not gonna do that one. Now. That that one's too racist. <laughs> <mistake. laughs> They're not gonna do Apache Chief, man. It's, I know, it's, I know. Yeah, but um, yeah, um, that that's honestly more about the 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 companies more than anything. It's it's who they hire, when they hire them, and what they allow them to do. Like Zack Snyder had a big vision. He had a good vision, but they, they, they handcuffed him. And, you know, he, he's getting, you know, he's kind of the, the, what's the word? He's the whipping boy, if you will. Cause everyone's like, Oh man, he can't direct or he's, I mean, the dude, you know, he, he did some good films before he, he did 300 and he did um, the Watchmen. That was, that was you know, that was, those, those films were great, but then mm -hmm. he got into this and he just realized that he's dealing with, corporate and these guys are they're not going to let him you know make superman too dark or too evil even though they you know when it happened it it it, it just kind of it fell flat but um mm -hmm. you, you got to let these guys create give them the space to really tell the stories and and trust that um that's where marvel i think is exceeding they're getting the right people on the right projects okay yeah. letting them create right all right, thanks, Steve. Um, Stanford, I remember there being, I know I'm taking it back. I'm always taking it back. But um, there was a uh, another black superhero that I remember, and he had they gave him his own comic book, but it was very short-lived. Do you remember Black Goliath? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. like what, whatever happened with that? You know, or that's just too that's too long ago. Yeah, well, that that okay. So did you guys see Ant Man at yes. all? Did you, yeah. Okay, he was in that. That was Lawrence, Fish, Lawrence Fishburne was Black Goliath. Wow, you I got to rewatch that. Yeah, I can watch it. But I mean, now that that being said, I don't know what they're gonna do with that character. I actually had a thought about pitching something 
this was about two years ago to Marvel, and I just said, nah. <laughs> uh, I'd rather do, you know, that was that was at the point where Black Panther was taking off uh, film, mm -hmm. film and all everything else, and we saw the opportunity to jump and do our own thing, um, the, um, the Bitterroot um, series, which, you know, that's that's where my head was at. Yeah, so speaking of Bitterroot, that gives me a question. So, Sanford, can you tell me about your, the the book you came up the bitter root? I'm glad that you we talked about you bringing images and bringing hit superheroes to black black uh, to, to young black people like ourselves, like your children, my child can see ourselves and about the Harlem Renaissance. Can you tell people about the book? And then uh, if you have a uh, uh, especially if you have a copy, you can hold up for it. I got my copy in the back. I can't get it from my seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have my copy in the back. And then you both have and talk about the special edition that you got coming up for Juneteenth. Yeah, well, that's not printed yet, so you know I'll okay. do that. But um, I can show you. This is a few of the. Um, I have the trade somewhere around here. If I was thinking, I would have had it ready. But it's about a family of uh, monster hunters set during the Harlem Renaissance, and they use steampunk technology and alchemy to deal with this infestation of monsters. And these, this infestation is it derives from hate. And so it's pretty much like you get bit by a vampire or scratched by a wolf, you turn. It's essentially in the same the same manifestation where the hate infects you. Um, and we're using historical um, references, um, Black Wall Street, um, like you said, uh, the mind, the Harlem Renaissance is the base, the overall base is where um, the family, um, uh, arrives and um, the matriarch of the family came from the south we're using you know segments of what took place here in her transition north uh, through uh, during the underground railroad when she was a little girl there's some mystical stuff that we're using that takes place within the underground railroad to where she was bestowed this power called the bitter root and now she's basically the um, the, the holder in the um, in the, um, the, uh, the the keeper of this power, and you know basically she teaches her entire family every generation until you know she dies for the most part, which she's not dead yet, so I'm not <laughs> no spoilers, but uh, but yeah, so basically this whole family they are the, you know the agents agents against this 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 evil force. Um, and they fight. It's pretty much, uh, if you really want to break it down into a, a lamest uh, term, they're kind of like Ghostbusters in 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 during the Harlem Renaissance. There's nothing like that. It's a lot more serious, but that's how they operate. Um, people aren't aware of them. They work in the shadows. So um, that's the, the, the you know the other difference. Um, th their 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 front. Um, for what people think they do is uh, they, they own this um, tonsorial kind of a haberdashery kind of establishment. Because, um, you know, back then it was all about, you know, you, you created as many opportunities under one roof as possible. You can be a shoe shine person or dental, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, hair, whatever, whatever it took to keep, um, you know, um, some kind of... Uh, of uh, revenue that's what you would do so people think that that's what they you know to do deal in uh, you know herbals and, and uh, things of that nature so that's what people think they're about um there are some that are aware of them they just don't know them quite they, they, they know that there's a there's a group of people out there that, that are dealing in some supernatural stuff and that's where you'll see all the characters come into the story that are that are aware of them and they're looking for them some good some have good intentions. Some definitely have, you know, very evil intentions about uh, trying to find them and and deal with them. And um, so, yeah, we 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 have the series has been out since um, 2019 or uh, 18. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let yeah. me ask this question. Um, everybody would love to do something that they're passionate about for a living. You obviously are a person that's able to do that. Um, could you give us a little insight on uh, how you develop the love for this? field and how you got into it um well trying to make a long story short saw cartoons as a kid you know saturday mornings you know back when cartoons were real cartoons right yeah and, 
uh, Super Friend, Spider-Man, you know, so on and so forth. And um, one day my I went I went with my mom to um, to the local uh, uh, Kmart and there was a spinner rack. That's why I got a spinner rack right now, man, because it's that whole nostalgia thing. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And um, so the spinner rack and I never seen this thing before. And it had these comics on it. First time I ever really seen comics, but I noticed there was Superman on one of the covers and Batman. I'm like, wait a minute, that's actual com uh, the characters that I see on the cartoons. So my six year old brain is starting to put it all together. Like, oh my God, this is, you know, the same thing in book form. That means I can take this stuff hopefully and and because I used to try to draw from the TV and you know, of course, this is pre even VCRs, man. I, I think, right. you know, so you're just trying to, you know, capture this stuff. And, and now I got this book that, that I can possibly use to uh, create these images. And um, so I, my mom saw, saw that I was there. This is back in the days where your mom can leave you in the store. Right. <laughs> she comes back and she knows that, you know, you're right in that same spot mm -hmm. like right. or whatever. So, um, yeah, that she saw that I, I was into that, or at least I looked interested. And, um, she uh, she said, "Okay, I'll buy it if you read it." And she she set me on a path that uh, never looked back, man. Wow, very yeah. nice. Yo, yo, Stanford, I got a great concept for a black superhero. <laughs> we go, Stanford, Stanford, Stanford. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> First of all, you know me, I tell your name. You know my name. I can't do business with you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I got a great concept though. Why don't we create a black superhero that battles your evil baby mama and family? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, you, you might want to talk to my man Carl Jones. I think he's got a. a, a if you know, if you know who Carl Jones, he um, helped to produce uh, the Boondocks. And, oh, okay, I know. Uh, he's, he's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I wish they would bring that back so bad, man. I had the DVDs, and oh, I wish they would bring that one back, man. Oh, well, they, they, they are. Um, it's just tied up in some. You know um, some of the, the licensing and, uh, and and things of that nature. I think I got a I got a few friends that are working on the uh, the new I thought, series. I thought, I thought Al Sharpton was still trying to block it or something. I was like, "Come on, Al, let it go." You know what I'm saying? Listen, go ahead, go ahead, man. No, so you listen. Uh huh? You good? Oh yeah. So I want to talk more about about the film that's going to come out. Like, can you tell people? Who discovered your comic book and what? Then why did and who's the person I want to produce the, uh, your your film? And and who's going to can you, if you can't talk about yeah. who's going to direct the direct the film? Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, when the book came out, you know, and kind of qu quickly on this too, the reason why we did this book uh, was a lot of what we're talking about. Right, we're talking about you know empowerment, seeing yourselves, you know that that feeling that I got that you know. I think we got um, as well um, when we saw a character that looked like us in in the comics as a little kid. It you know it just enamored me, and um, you know here's you know fast forward forty some odd years later, Black Panther the film comes out, and this thing is changing people's lives. You know, like on screen and off screen, um, you see you know whole. Um, different institutions, schools, universities, um, grade schools, taking bus loads of kids to go watch this film. Yeah. And it was just so, uh, it's very transformational. And, you know, I was a part of that, you know, working on developing uh, some of the concept stuff for, for the film. And that was awesome and a great experience. Um, and then it just dawned on me that once this is over, then what? What what else is next? You know, it's like you got this Black Panther, and yeah, but that's just one. What about, you know, every other character, Black Goliath or whatever else that might be out there? There's no real plans for any of these other characters. So, and then to take it a step further, I realized that even with that, no matter how much I want to do Black Goliath, if Marvel says we don't want to do it, they're not gonna do it. <laughs> they can yeah. care less, right? Yeah. And so um that's when we started thinking, you know, um, we need to start developing our, our own thing. We need to make our own, you know, uh, path to uh, creating uh, some some content that's going to really be uh, transformational because that's the next step. Um, there's a lot of uh, 
creator own titles out there right now. I got a, my friend Robert Kirkman. He created Walking Dead, and you know where that thing is. I mean, I don't care if you read comics or not. You know, you know about Walking Dead, but you know here it is. This is a Caucasian male creating this this content. I'm like, why can't we do that for 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 you know us? Why can't we create some black content and make it just as important or as powerful as uh, Walking Dead or a even the Black Panther. So that's what really got us motivated. And um, long story short, we created the book. It, it started doing really well. Um, you know, truth be told, it's it was the first it, Image Comics. These are the guys that created Spawn. The Walking Dead is at this company. Um, you know, books like that, Invincible. If you guys seen the new show that's out now, that's over there. And then you got us. And we're the first Black all create a black team at image in like 25 years, oh, um, wow. you know, which is kind of telling in itself. Um, so people were, you know, they were, they were definitely all over this thing. And we, we knew people were starving for something new and um, it got us the recognition, started getting us a lot of recognition. We won those awards that you were talking about. And um, you know, now we get, um, you know, when that happens, then the, you know, Hollywood comes, so legendary, the guys that did Godzilla and King Kong, mm -hmm. all those films, they reached out to us, um, um, and uh, they gave us a, a deal that was better than any other deal, even better than uh, just kind of a sidebar. We Jordan Peele reached out to us about it. Um, John Legend reached out to us about it, or his studio did, and none none of them had a better deal than Legendary. So we were like, okay, we're gonna go with these guys. So the announcement happened about the, the film. And then uh, our lawyer calls us and, and he's like, dude, I hope you're sitting down because we just got uh, a call from Ryan Coogler. He, he wants this film bad. He wants to do the film. And we're like, dude, that's absolute. That's the one guy that I thought wouldn't have the time or, you know, maybe he would be interested, but just didn't have the time because we were asked about um, you know, our wish list of people that would, and he was number one, no lie. He was number one simply because of what he did with Panther. And, you know, he's just a great director and he, he's a fan of this stuff too. And um, so when we heard it was him, it was just absolutely mind boggling. And my whole thing was, well, you know, did he hear about it from a friend or some other colleagues in the industry or some guys, you know, or whatever. And um, my lawyer was like, no, nah, he's, he's been buying a comic book. I'm like, he's been buying it? Like, he goes to the shop or the store or whatever. He's buying this thing. So I'm like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So we meet him. Um, we got a chance to meet him. And he's every bit of exactly what you see. If you've seen any uh, interviews, he's really down to earth. He's like the dude that could be in this podcast right now just hanging out. Um, no, no ego. No, no. You know, so long story short, he jumped on and um, fast forward um, because of his reputation and 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 and, and his um, his power pretty much in the industry right now. He's got all the A list directors coming to to sign on with him, and um, we got uh, Regina King to sign up, with him. and um, that one floor me even more. I'm like, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me. Um, that she's the last person I thought that would be <laughs> on this. Wow. Not, not yes. because, not because I didn't think she could do it. Just that I thought she was just so far beyond any of this. And, um, just to, to see her as a matter of fact, I think a friend of mine just sent me a quick interview with her talking a little bit about, about it on uh, MSNBC today. So it was, it's surreal, man. Wow. That's what's up, man. Listen, right. people, you never know. You never know who's watching. That's what I tell kids. You That's never right. know who's watching. That's the biggest thing, man. Yo, Sanford, listen, man. Listen, bro. You know how much I love you, man. I okay. appreciate you coming on the show, man. And I used to drive this guy home on weekends, man. Back in the days, <laughs> I used to see his family sometime, man. We yes, got go back. We were we were broke, broke, <laughs> broke, 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 broke. Listen, man. I oh. love you, man. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was gonna say, uh, real quick. Uh, speaking of that, man, the Juneteenth cover. Oh, yeah. uh, you got a Juneteenth variant edition that's coming out um, here real soon. 
And, um, you know, anyone interested in that, interested in that, just uh, talk to DeMond. He'll hook you. <laughs> I know everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talk to DeMond. He'll, he'll get you guys squared away. Yeah, and where can people find the comic book at in, in the stores and the local neighbors and all stuff or websites yeah. and anything like that? You can go to, uh, if you just want to check it out, the, the you know, the, the overall story, you can go to Amazon. I got volume one and two is out there. If you want to collect some of this, some of the uh, exclusive covers, your local comic store may have some. Um, eBay has them, but I'll be you know, honest with you, they're kind of pricey on eBay. But um, if the Juneteenth cover will be in local comic shops um, everywhere. Midtown Comics has a, a big... Um, they have a big um, promotion for it right now. If you guys, any of you guys in New York, um, they, 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 they got a big promotion for it right now. Yeah, yeah, man. I would yeah. like to also say, we'll say for one time, man, um, I have two teen, uh, two preteen boys, and um, I'm, I talk to them all the time about um, the need to make conscious decisions regarding um, uh, image and choosing people or uh, heroes that remind them of themselves, seeing themselves in character, seeing themselves in imagery. So I'm just glad that you're there, brother, doing what you do. And um, and I'm definitely all over it from here on out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And listen, you're talking about Ryan's a down, down as brother. Now, this is a down as brother. Cool's a fan. Always been like this. Always been a cool dude, man. Always been a good sweetheart, like nice guy. Like, you know, I love this guy. Love his love his wife too, you know. She called us old the other night. I was kind of mad. She called me and him old the other night. Hey, man. Up, man. So, 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 sometimes you just gotta you gotta just kinda let it just let it ride, man. She, she loves to throw it in I'm like, look, you right behind us. It ain't like it's yeah. right, right, yeah, right. She forgot we all went to school together. Like she's like, she, she, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she, yeah. She, she yeah. Kind of clown us the other night on our age, man. But we still look good by our age, man. Tell them, man. We still look good by right here. Yeah. Listen, brother, man. I hope to see you soon, man. I love you a lot, man. Um, what's your number? The best. I still want my red carpet tickets. Remember, I said that. I don't <laughs> want those red carpet tickets when this movie releases, man. Seriously, man. Hey, we we try to make it a black carpet, man. That's right. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yo, make it a black carpet for real, man. For real. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there in kente cloth too. I tell you what, <laughs> Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan Coogler would be the one, man. That dude yeah. is—he's uh, very unapologetic about it, man. Yeah, I remember he came to talk to our kids at, uh, with, uh, with Damon. He just chimed in. He came to talk to our kids. You and them both came on there and chopped it up with the kids for free. And I love that. Like y'all gave your time, man. We really appreciate that too, too man. Seriously, Absolutely. man. Yes, sir. Right, man. I love you. Get back to your Saturday, man. Enjoy your nice <laughs> warm weather down in Carolina. I hope to see, I hope to see you in October, bro. When I come down. Yes, man. sir. Absolutely, bro. All right, man. All right, man. All right, man. Thanks, man. Bro. All right thank you, Peace. brother. Take care, man. Oh, man, it was good. Yo, man. Oh, Derek yeah. in the middle. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. That was a great interview. But I'm going to tell you something, Dean. I know what you're trying to do, and I'm not going to allow this. Derek, be very, very careful. When they start doing the Let's Chop It Up, the movie, he's going to try to make Casper black. I'm telling you that right now. I'm, try, I'm telling you right now. Derek, I don't want that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I saw my man walk by two times and I said, yeah. I can't even say nothing because we're yeah. doing an interview. Yeah. 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 Go like this. Right. Yeah, I, saw, I didn't know what to say, man. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Listen, uh, I, I guess, I guess, we'll, guess I'm going to get to play his part. Sammy Jackson. Sammy Jackson, come on. I'm going to have to come on. Yo. Yo. What the fuck y'all on that computer again? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm a, I know y'all going to think I'm trying to be funny, but this is this is true. I used to remember when Samuel Jackson was in damn near everything. Every movie yeah, Samuel Jackson was in. No, there was a time like there was, I mean, he had like four or five movies out at one time. Yeah. But that's when you go back and don't realize who he was at the time. Correct, yeah. correct, yeah. correct. I used yeah. to think Samuel L. Jackson was triplets. It was three people that just, because <laughs> I said, he can't be in three all these places at one time. I used oh, to man. think that he just walk onto a movie and say, "Yo, I'm gonna play this role," and they make they have no choice. <laughs> you know, I, and I think that's how, he was yeah. working. And I think yeah. that's how Nick Fury probably got black. He walked onto the Avengers <laughs> set and said, "Yo, I'm gonna be Nick Fury today, and yo are gonna fucking do it now." <laughs> <laughs> yo, he looks good for his age, man. But I, I, like, I like like the, a lot of insight of San Francisco, like how to, how you, I, was, I forgot who gave the question, but they all trying to change the character and give them these little backstories. They you know mm -hmm. made him from a uh, Nick uh, Fury was white back in the, in the book, but now he's black and stuff like that. You no, know, so yeah. it's good. Now, one thing I forgot to ask Sam, but one thing with him, 
like the walking dead if he keeps it he keeps his books even though the, the show goes off the books still keep you going on and living that's one yeah, thing that's right. that's yeah right. you know so so that's right. but anyway jamie said we got to go to commercial he's in my ear saying we got to go to commercial so let's go to commercial jamie. yeah yeah I'm Hi, I'm Dawn Kelly, and I'm the founder and CEO of The Nourish Spot, a healthy food and beverage haven in Southeast Jamaica, Queens, chosen in 2019 as Micro Business of the Year by the U.S. Small Business Administration. My adult children, Jade and Owen Duncan, and I established The Nourish Spot to provide affordable access to healthy produce to help our neighbors combat chronic diseases, to provide jobs for a diverse community youth. And it's no secret that small businesses play a critical role in the local economy. It's also proven that community is vital to the growth of small businesses. So come, let us nourish you at the Nourish Spot. We're open Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 6, and Saturdays, 10 From the commercial, listen, we still got our sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> Told them. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, we having a good time, man. Our brother A Rod from the former uh, former MLB baseball player has a new uh, makeup product uh, for men. Uh, um, any thoughts on this? That's a goofy ass picture, but any thoughts? That's mm. why J Lo. That's why J Lo left him because he kept going in her makeup. <laughs> oh, always oh, taking up the bathroom time. Yeah, yeah. Kept I'm using him. Kept using her mascara. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. Now we're getting ready to start this stuff where men are going to be wearing makeup. You know what I'm saying? We men are just getting too feminine. I don't think men should be wearing makeup unless you're an actor and you're on a TV show or something like that. But other than that, walking around and during the course of your day wearing makeup for men, I don't know. I, I'm not with it. I, I'm not with it either, man. The only time I had to wear makeup, like you said, I was on um uh, Fox one shows on Fox one time. Yeah. And they put a bunch of makeup on your face, I, but I'm not. I'm not with it. They, you want to keep the shine off my bald head. They had to put the makeup on there. Correct. Yeah. And I, had to wear, I had to wear makeup when me, like me and my family, did like pictures for a family photo shoot. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, you can't. I can't rock that. Shit. No, I can't. Be that's, that what saying, that's what they're saying. It actually came from though. Like you know what I mean? It's like we're, we're, for the last year, everybody's been on these Zoom calls. So you know you that's it's it's almost the same thing. So now people are starting men are starting to think men. I don't know which one, but certain men are starting to look and think of themselves and say, hey, you know, I want to touch up here and there, and they do it. I'm not with it, but you know, I can kind of see the the um, if you're that type, if that's important to you, I kind of see you know the reasoning behind it or the logic behind it. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm not wearing no I'm not wearing no blush and no eyeshadow, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't go with my eyes, man. 
I yeah. mean, we're we're on a show right now. Ain't none of us got no makeup on. I don't think you know. But. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Cal. What's going on, brother? You know, <laughs> you're just yo, even right yo, now. You're yo, even. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Dark skin unite. Come on, Dean. Word up. Let's unite. Word up. <laughs> you know, no, speaking of the dooms, Derek makes a point. I see they said, uh, I was reading somewhere where women are starting to get. Uh, uh, more butt stuff done because they've been sitting down so much. They saying their butts are getting flat. I, I seen stuff like this on like yeah, it's crazy shit, man. About the because they sitting on zooms all day. I know. I I'm just making up shit. They just making up shit. That's just come on, come on. I was the thing, born in the wrong era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess when you were sitting on your ass in the office, that didn't count, right? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Good you point. Were there, you were there for eight hours. Around the yeah, way. exactly. You were doing the same thing yeah. in the office. Yeah, you gotta be yeah. a gotta damn sure good point on that one, man. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, um, this guy he said, oh Tony Braxton, man, he was uh, uh Jamie, I think he's okay. You got a picture of Tony Braxton, Jamie? Woo, man, Tony Braxton's killing him at fifty three, man. She ain't playing no games, brothers. Yo, she looked like a like um Amber Rose when she first started. Like, Facts. Yeah, yeah. Like, but she ain't got those. She ain't got the Amber Rose. She looked a little lighter too. I mean, yeah. I guess that's just the yeah, lighting. She got some daisies. She got Amber Roses. Yeah, yeah. She got Amber Roses. Because that Amber Rosa, yeah, Amber Rosa was a lot thicker. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, what, what, what were they saying? They were just saying she's like kind of no, she, 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 shut, she shut down the draft. She came out at 53, like bong. Or like, you got chicks that's 23, ain't got no, they ain't looking like Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton quarantine, yeah. they mess her up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, quarantine, they mess her up. She got yeah. better. She got better. I mean, there's a lot of celebrities that got better with age. Ashanti, I used to think cute with a sideburns back in the day. A sideburns yeah. went down when she got older. I think Ashanti was going to come out. <laughs> well, well, I'm thinking I, think, I think she is. I think Ashanti is attractive. But the, you know, what happened was, what really messed me up about Ashanti <laughs> early on was, and I, it probably wasn't warranted, but they used to say she was kind of like like a little, she wasn't humble at first. That's what I used to hear a lot. You used to just hear that. You know, because she's from Glen Cove, I believe, Long Island, and I've seen some people that have seen her and stuff. But, and uh, we'll say have the same reputation, Rihanna, but yeah, you can you can uh, grow old gracefully. Plus, I think people really get into fitness in their body and they work out today and things like that. So, you know, and then take it. You take care of yourself. You definitely it, fifty three is is not a death sentence. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. You know, it's about how you live your life. You know, what I'm saying if you ripping and running the streets, or you know, what I'm saying you are doing heavy stuff, yeah. it's going to take its toll on you. Tony, yeah, yeah. fifty three. That's a very soft fifty three. We've seen yeah. hard fifty three before. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. look, Rihanna got better wage. Rihanna head was so big when she was young. I couldn't. I ain't seen number. She loved somebody. She dropped the head when she was a baby, and now she's looking better. Rihanna got thicker. She looked better. Yeah, <laughs> right. like, people, yeah, when black, right. black women are getting better with age. It looks like now they yeah, get better yeah. with age. And well, they we know it is. Women are not women are known for that, man. And it's not just the age, it's the stage when you recognize what stage of life you're in. Right. You're not walking around here trying to be 20 years old when you 45, 50. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's mm -hmm. the reality. And once you understand that, you get comfortable in your own skin. That's you know right. what I'm saying? And that's, that's just right. what it is. We've seen those women. Yeah, I think you we know. all think about stuff now better. Like we all like CMOS stuff we, that's been around. We're really like getting back to that kind of stuff. We go start exercise, walking. You know, I yeah. think that's what that's what it is. As we know, we know we we got to start getting in shape. And I think that's what these systems are. And doing. know what works for you. Like what work, like yeah. example, there's things that people do that I don't do. Like I'm not a tattoo guy. I'm not an earring guy. Some people are. It works for them. It doesn't work for me. So I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. Yeah. So you know, once you know, but see, I was never into the cloning thing. Like, all right, I need to look like you look, whatever. You know, if it works for you, it works yeah. for you. And that, that's something to be said about that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I mean, that's, that's just... Yeah. It, it's it, you're right. You're right, Kelvin. It's it's important to be comfortable in your own skin. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? No, no Absolutely. Question. It's very important. Yeah. I, and I know a lot of people that are not very comfortable. In right. It. Whatever your lane yeah. is, just just embrace yeah. it. And stuff like that. You yeah. Know you I mean? gotta embrace who you are. You know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta you hope you get better at that age. You hope we get better with that as we age. You know, get more mm -hmm. comfortable with yourself, being more at ease with your spirit and everything. You know. And, you know, we've seen women or men, for that matter. You know who. Are not quite there. They dress a little young for their age. You know, they come mm -hmm. into the more trendy things. You know, I'm not wearing no damn skinny jeans down in my ass, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. That? That's not okay with that is. Yo, you know, listen, but, my know. thing, oh, let me get one thing before we get to the next topic. Why are all these young boys wearing these goddamn purses? I was at a party and these boys had purses in the house. They take the purse to the bathroom. They yeah. the, I'm like, every boy uh -huh. has a goddamn yeah. purse. 
a purse, a purse. And they wearing it, wearing it and they wearing it across themselves a like a freaking pocketbook. Yeah, like they like they got tampons in it. They taking it to the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where do styles come from in, in our community? Where the styles come from? Styles sometimes come from jail. Rappers. Styles sometimes will come from rappers. And yeah. rappers sometimes will get it from jail. And so mm -hmm. it's just a cycle. Well, who's think wearing a purse in jail? No, no, no. no, no. 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 I'm, I'm not. <laughs> See, <laughs> what I noticed. What I notice is the rappers when they carry in those pocketbooks, they're carrying like a lot of money in, the, in them. And so now I guess regular people follow it and, gotcha. and they carry the bags too. But it, it ain't cool to me. And, and, and with, all of that, with all of that, Gerald <laughs> still said on his interview, it's still not cool to be smart in the hood. That just That's don't it. catch him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a, I mean, the person, like they have name brand. I, I just can't believe, like, I was at a party last Saturday and like four or five boys all had purses. Yeah. Well, what point was you at, brother? That's what we got to find out. <laughs> no, nah, I was at my friend. No, I was with you. Oh, the young boys. I think anybody that's under like 30, they all got these damn purses. I'm like, they don't have no money in their pocket. Everything's in their purse. Like, think about this. If you had a purse, where's your wallet at now? Yo, is, have, it, you is, it, is, it, D, is it really a, called a purse, though? Is it like, what do they? A purse. A purse. They call it a man purse. A purse. Mm. Wow. Like I said, I'm just born in the wrong era because, I mean, I just can't, you know, some of this stuff would just pass me by. Yeah. And, you know my daddy, and my daddy would say they sissy five. That's why, <laughs> that's why, you know what's funny? That's why I like uh, movies, black women in particular, from the 70s and 80s, before all of this plastic surgery and all stuff like that, from the 70s and 80s. I always just think that because everybody was just kind of natural with who they were. And you knew if you saw them, that's who they were. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Now it's just like everybody's kind of put together and it's it's kind of like this herd mentality. I don't like it as much. You know what I mean? So speaking of people getting uh with age, uh Joe Brown, uh recently I don't know if Jamie, we have a little uh, we have a little video to that. Thing. All right, I'm straight, I'm heterosexual. Mm -hmm. But when I see Lizzo the lizard hippo with a bare fat flabby ass trying to twerk in public, looking like a damn harlot. In front of children, see, that's not right. When I look at Cardi B, who is a street walking hoe who brags about how she used to drug her trick so she could rob them, yeah, she did and say that. See, that kind of thing put up as an exemplar of heterosexuality and normalcy that is not normal, something's wrong. Well, that was Joe Brown and Kwame Brown. <laughs> the Browns are going at it with everybody nowadays, wow. the Browns are on attack. So Joe, Brown, listen. You know how old uncles get. But so, any thoughts? Yo, man. Yeah, I, listen, I would love to be able to defend them, right? But look, he 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 broke it down, man. He's like, listen, it's kind of hard to defend someone who says that they used to drug somebody and do legal activity and take advantage of them. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to defend someone who you know who's. Going out there, you know, we remember when, when the booty was out. We, I think we, you and I was talking before, uh, Rod. You know, I, Rodney didn't realize who Whit Lizzo was until I, I said, did. Oh, you know, yeah, the same one from when you know her ass was out at the day. At Lakers, at Lakers, yeah. Lakers he was all oh, yeah. right up, you know, that's what she was known for, you know what I mean. Well, you know, it, the thing is that, that that's to me, and we when we talked about this, Derek, you're right, and um. When I know you for an embarrassing moment or some sort of shocking moment, then the thing is, like, I don't know you for being talented. I know you for something that you've done extreme. You know what right. I'm saying? But I do realize in today's time, people do things now for a shock effect and to get yeah. followers and views and all of that stuff. But it, there's a price that comes along with that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I didn't know that she made I didn't even know she made a record or anything. Right. I had no idea. You know? Right. Well, this is the thing I think you got to be conscious of. You know, Kwame Brown has really, really, you know, rose to national attention lately on being a victim. At the same time, you have somebody that's coming that's kind of critical on some some other younger people. And, you, you know, you could, you know, it could be a contradiction in terms like that. Kwame Brown is saying everybody kind of defamed him and, and said negative things about him. Now Joe Brown comes on his show and you're saying negative things. So I don't know if it's necessarily whether you agree or not with what those young ladies do. I simply don't care for it. But at the same time, they are younger people. They have changed their lives. They have moved on. I mean, we've got a bunch of rappers that were selling drugs at one point. And now, as you mentioned, one of them is a billionaire. So, I mean, you got to give them time to evolve, too. 
And so I think, uh, Derek, I don't think name calling is ever the answer. Then you can identify something, but calling a young lady a hoe or a street walking hoe and, and this one is, um, you know, she fat and all that. I think you got to be conscious of that, especially Kwame Brown, who was saying that he was called the bust and he didn't like it. So, you know, I'm not saying he said it, but it was yeah, on his platform. Go ahead, there, Derek. There's, there's a difference. There's a key difference. Kwame Brown wasn't doing any illegal activity, number one, all right? So we can get rid of Cardi B right there, all right? And then also, right, he wasn't out there embarrassing himself, going out butt naked and doing something like that so we can get rid of Lizzo. All he did was get picked, number one, do his job to the best of his ability, all right, and get caught up and people had an opinion of, get caught up in an opinion. These P these other two are out there doing stuff that's not a part of a job, it's not part of anything other than selfishness. You know what I mean? Something that's very self-centered. And I understand that, yes, we have to allow for them that they were young when they were doing it, right? And I get that. And you know, God willing, you know, they'll go and they'll 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 progress and they'll grow and evolve into something completely different and beautiful when they're older, you know what I mean? And just be graceful with it. But in the meantime. You know, if he calls her a street walking hoe, and what she did was go out there and, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to defend it. No, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm not even trying to defend it. That's what not even my point. I guess, I, that's not, I'm not, not trying to defend it. What I'm saying is this. Remember, Bobby Brown says, you know, I had no shoes, this and that, the third. So in other words, you're in a situation. I'll say this. Deprivation impairs your judgment. It does. I don't know what it's like to go out and sell drugs. I've never had a need to. I don't know what it's like for a, a woman to become a stripper and, and, and sell her body or show her body or whatever like that. I'm just saying, and I get your point, Derek. I'm not saying I approve that. I'm just saying when it comes to judging people, especially younger people, especially of a certain community or things like that, some people are going to take exception to it and you just have to be conscious. Like, for instance, Kwame Brown has really been anti-media and now Kwame Brown is part of the media. So it's just like, you, you know, these things have a way of changing and before you know it, Bonnie Brown is going to get a sponsor because he has so much views. And then the sponsor is going to say, you can't say this. And you get so all of, you know, Steve Nate Smith being a seller, all this stuff like that. Eventually, you become part of the process. That's what it is. But uh, Joe Brown, I've heard him on a couple of different platforms. Outside of being on that bench, I don't know that you want to necessarily listen to Joe Brown. <laughs> Joe Brown goes this <laughs> <laughs> also, also, to that point, like, you know, Kwame Brown was getting on people for ripping, saying they ripping down black men. Is he ripping down black women now? No, well, I no, I don't see no, it that way. Either. But okay. the thing is, you, you see, I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna go off the edge a little bit, going a different direction. The thing is, this is what I don't like about when um, Lizzo and and Cardi B, like the things that they do. Like I kind of have an understanding of how the industry works. So the thing is, they're setting a foundation for black young black women that they're only going to be able to be successful unless they behave that way. So that's the that's the issue that I have with it. So then basically another female artist comes along who's maybe really talented or whatever. And the industry pushes her and says, listen, show your ass. Show your ass at a funeral so you can get some <laughs> get damn. some attention. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, because like, the thing is, you have to keep going more and more extreme. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the thing is, uh, 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 we won't see a, a natural talent female like Alicia Keys anymore because... That's not what the, the industry is going to say sells. And they're only going to do it to young black women. They're going to make them do extreme things. They're going to make them do whorish behavior in order to become successful. That's my issue with it. No, you know it's, I mean? all shock. it's all shock. You know what I mean? And, and, and Everything I is shock. I think that's what he's not. He's not ripping black women or ripping them black women. Correct. He's correcting bad behavior. Correct. You know I what I mean? That's what he's, about he's bad behavior. Yeah, that's the bad behavior. One's out there doing what she's doing, drugging people. The other one's out there butt naked, twerking and all of that. You know what I mean? And you know, and then doesn't want to be body shamed after it. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, so it's kind of like yo, you you put yourself out there. Relax. Yeah. Be modest. Do your thing. Stay in your lane. Do whatever you want to call it, man. But just just behave. Well, I don't know what you want to call it, man. But just. Just up together, man. Well, I'm, not, I'm not a Cardi B fan. I'm uh, not. So, in, I'm, yeah, it, I don't it, think it, that any of us can name a young white female celebrity or artist that's doing that it. Has to, correct. That has to do that in order to gain fame. I don't the think we can. I'm about to say we can go back to we can go to Madonna. We can go back to Britney Spears. But I want to I want to move us along to the next time mm -hmm. we go since we're talking about like. Uh, but I'm talking about today. 
I don't, I don't, I don't follow white artists. So I don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm too yeah. pro black now. But anyhow, <laughs> speaking of, um, it was a girl and the guy talking about uh, how women dress on social media, and I think Jamie, we have a video for that, and we're talking about different things. No, dress, dress how you want to be addressed. Okay, yes. cool. Perfect. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't agree with that. You don't? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Because you're supposed to be a, you, you're supposed to be addressed with respect regardless, period. Oh, so oh, even oh, if you're saying, no, it's not, nobody said no, not But no you're saying, so just because somebody, dress how you want to be addressed. We talked about this on the phone. Mm -hmm. So if a, if, a, if a lady is on Instagram and she got all naked pictures, right? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to address her sexually because she got all naked pictures? Wholeheartedly. No. <laughs> Nigga, what the fuck else? All I'm saying is, so are you, you Okay, okay so let me ask you this. If you go to a relative's page and you see all houses, you're going to ask that nigga, do you sell cars? <laughs> Exactly. You're not, bro. I mean, no thoughts, gentlemen. I mean, she's. I, 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 I think she. I think she was right. I did, absolutely think she's right. Now, I'm not saying that everybody. I'm not condoning disrespecting women or you should treat women like hoes or whatever. But let's face the facts. In today's time, if you're on social media and you on the half naked, you you basically using sex to attract attention. What's, right. the not, like, what's the issue like, when he's saying how you address them? Yeah, how you address them. You know what I mean? Like, he was like, should you yeah. address the woman in a sexual manner because she's on social media like half naked? And you know, you know how like a lot of social media pages and like what OnlyFans pages um have women like half naked. So, like I guess if you meet her and you you're approaching her on some sort of sexual um intentions, he's saying that's wrong. I, I, think, I think I think he, I think out. I think that I think that is wrong. I don't think that gives you a license to do that just because. I mean, what if you meet a porn star? Are you supposed to just be able to grab or something? I mean, like at the end of the day, I, I got that, but I'm saying, well, how do you what do you call a hoe, Derek? Hey, what's up, hoe? I, I mean, what? No, I mean, no, 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 no. What you, what is, so I thought he said how you address her. How should you address? her? Well, the thing is, I'm I'm not I'm not you're not asking I'm talking me. about you. I'm saying, I'm saying oh, that I would address her just I would address her just regularly if I'm. What I'm saying is he's saying. He's he's saying that like men shouldn't address her in a sexual manner because she's on a, a social media page half naked, and I'm going to say there are a lot of men that will do that. Right, they I don't will. think they have. I don't. I don't think they have the right to do it. I don't think mm. they're right. Look, the woman looks like she was saying, "Yeah, once you do that, all bets are off." But right. and I, said, I don't think saying. you know. And I think, I think you guys are right. People but are going to address them. Like people that. are going to definitely. There's guys that's definitely going to do it. But we're not. But we're, 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 again, we're missing the point. You're talking about right. I'm. She's talking about expectation. Correct. All right. Correct. It's two different things. All but right. It's still friends. subjective with people, though. Right. It's, it's still subjective with people. You you're, you're talking. We're talking from a moral standpoint, Kelvin. You know what I'm saying? The thing is this: we're talking about what she's giving off, how of people course. are going to perceive it and, and catch it. You know what I'm saying? No, doubt. no question. And I'm going to say there's a lot of guys out there that are going to perceive it and catch it. And they no, not, they're not going to come out of the respect. Even if one doesn't do that, there's a lot. Of, we know a lot of dudes that are going to do that regardless, <laughs> right? Correct. Just to right. yeah. yeah. We get that. I'm just saying. I get. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying. I agree with the dude that you should still. Um. I mean, you know, try to treat people like you want to be treated, even though I know the image is is is, is going to be considered foul. You, okay. you know. You, you know. With, what would with, Jesus do? Yeah. But, yeah. But okay. One of I guess. I mean, one of um. um Followers that said uh, women keep saying that this is what men want. Okay, okay, Jamie, there you, okay, there you brought it up. But she's right. I agree. I agree. <laughs> like, like you know, we, they, 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 women think some things what men want. Men, men are saying we don't want that. It's so it's so confusing right now. It, it depends. Now, if we're talking <laughs> about men, or we're talking about young men, or we're talking about boys, there are three different categories. You got that's, 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 a point. You got a point there. Or a right. certain type of men, man. There's a certain type. You know, okay. there's like I think you, there's a certain man who's you know, who's vibrating on a high level, you know, a mature mm -hmm. level who can come, Correct. you know, but then there are others who, you know, think with the lower vibration and, you know, and that's, you know, and that's how they move, you know. That's so, how they move. They're going to move yeah. different. I love yeah. all women that have for, for, for fans only pages. I love them all. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> the, the question is, do you, do you take the woman home to meet mom that has an own for, or, or only fan page? You know, Hey, hey, if, yeah. she, if she make my, if she pays my it, travel for my car payment, she can do oh, it. Well, I went out for a minute. Oh, okay. I, 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 I thought I ain't paid a bill. Uh, <laughs> hey, you got to spend it for knowing me. Go ahead. 
Oh, another comment. Derek, can you read that comment? Yeah, right they are the grown white women on YouTube right now doing yoga completely in the nude. I wonder if white men are confused about if or how to address them. Yeah, that's a yeah. real good question. Good, good. That's a good question. They, I don't think they're confused. I think that there's <laughs> I think that they're doing it and 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 and, and, and they're being very blatant about it. And I think probably yeah, you know, there's an understanding. I, you know? I used I used to I used to work on the police department around a lot of white guys. They can be very horrible and cruel, yeah. To especially to women and their own women, you yeah. know. So yeah. the thing is, I'm gonna say they are definitely gonna address them in a certain way, and they're gonna talk about them like dogs. Yeah. But yeah. I used to see it constantly, especially in a locker room. There is such thing as real locker room talk. Yeah. No. So, I mean, I think right, us right. Black people. I think us as black people, we are understanding of circumstances. We look at things in a circumspect way. We see, okay, you know, we don't know what the person is going through to make, you know, the decisions they make. And I think we're just more prone to think of things in a more holistic way. And now we got, you know, but sometimes it just is what it is, man. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, so with that said, it's a, like you said, it's a new generation, and Kelvin said he, he don't know this generation what's going on now. Recently, we started to see a lot of women start to propose to men. Jamie, can you play us a video clip real quick of that? Oh are we a new said, are we, are said we, no. Nah. <laughs> he said no. He really did? No. I think he said yes. I think he said yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a lot of beta males going on that. But <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, right? I don't, I really don't have a problem with a woman asking a man to marry him. I think, I think I'm a little bit maybe old fashioned to some degree, and I say it's probably better if the man asks. You know, I think the man should choose his wife. But the thing is, I am against yeah. doing open proposals like that because yeah. what no happens jumbo is time. no jumbo Tom? huh? No, no jumbo jumbo. At the game. Nah, nah, I would never do that. I would never do that. The reason <laughs> why is because you're putting a person in a position that yeah. they have to say yes to save your ass a whole bunch of embarrassment. No, so I've seen say no in that environment too. That's fast. Now I have, but you rarely <laughs> see that. You'll see one here and there, but 90% of the time people are saying yes. But I, me personally, I think I'd rather propose, which I have done in private. Because if you don't want to marry me, then it's just between me and you You saying no. Yeah. But I don't believe in open forum um, proposals. I think you. I think it's a big shot. I think it's a big, a big chance. Yeah. You're taking a big chance. I'll yeah. be real with you. I'll be real with you. I am, I guess I'm just old fashioned in that regard. I don't, that, that felt weird to me. It just it, it did. It, it felt weird. It felt weird seeing her in a skirt kneel down and looking at Ray Ray up there who, who looked like he stole my Red Bull machine first. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> He looks a lot younger. He looks a lot younger than her too. Uh, yeah, it's just, I yeah, just, that's true too. You know what, I'm is, what happened to just manhood? What happened yeah. to masculinity? Like, what happened to? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, now. Yeah, I'm gonna say, like, say it. I'm gonna say it. Don't say it. I'm just saying it. He don't say it. I'm gonna say it rhetorically. You don't have to say it. To you. <laughs> no, there's a certain group of people that are out here that attacked it. And they think that yeah. when, you, when you see those men not doing those right things, that's not masculine. Those are those messed up men. Masculine men like ourselves do the right things by women. Masculine men like ourselves take care of our community. Those people took masculinity and painted this picture of this being something else that they wanted to the narrative to, part, to go with their agenda. I didn't say anything to get me banned. So there. You know, I'm, I'm with you. I saw a boy one day. I saw a boy one day. He had to be about 16 years old. In a car while his mother is out there pumping the gas, almost threw up. Like I don't even understand that. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I don't even understand. From the time I could carry a a, a supermarket bag, and stuff, my father's like, "Yo, when I'm not here, take care of your mother and your sister." That's like right. you know, man. Like when I was a little That's kid, right. you know what I'm saying? My exactly. sons, my sons, open doors, close doors for their mother. They all of that, man. They know, right. That's you know right. what I mean? Exactly. They automatically, man. That's right. You know? So right. speak. Speaking of that, right. Really masculine in men. Do women when do women notice that we be around sometimes you see people in the crowd, you're like, yo, I don't know if this woman knows her man is gay or not. So I mean the women, I'm talking to hopefully we got some women in this chat. I don't think it follows like us on the comments on YouTube later on. 
when do you not when do you know that your man is a guy you don't know? Like we've seen a lot of guys um that we know <laughs> and they women yeah. were caught up with her. Like I had a friend that had a that guy lied to her and he and she passed away because she wanted to get AIDS from him because he never told about his sexuality. He was gay in real life. But we saw him like you should have known that. But I mean, there's a lot of for instance like that. I mean, you look at um Terry McMillan. Mm-hmm. I don't know how she did not see I think that. They know. I think they know. I'm sorry. So I mean, like what you're saying <laughs> that she definitely was just in denial. You think that you know? Because the thing is, the guy is prettier than her. I'm gonna yeah. say. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I think every woman knows this. When it comes to a woman, no, this, this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying this point. When it comes to a woman, there's a certain reaction that women know they can get from men. I mean. A woman knows that she can get from it. A, a woman gonna catch a man out there looking at her. A woman's gonna catch a man. I mean, she you gonna sense certain things. You it's just innate that you'll see. And I just think they the women. I think what's that thing they said? Women have gate on. I think women can find out quick. I don't care if the dude look like like the Rock. They can a, a woman can tell. I can't. I, yeah, I, Kelvin. I've seen women married to guys that you, we clearly know are gay. But check yeah, this yeah. out. I've never <laughs> seen a woman married to a dude that you clearly knew was gay that was broke. Right. It's it's always a dude that is successful and they get something out of it. I'm telling you, I never seen them yeah. with the with the with the, the gay broke dude. They just happen to be. I've seen it in the ministry a lot. There's a lot of these women that get with these dudes, knowing they gay, knowing they fronting, but the dude got her in a Bentley. And you know what? They find the strength to go on. It's, Sometimes it's, you see it the other way around. Sometimes you see it the other you, way around. But you know they suspend. They, that, that thing that's in them that tell them, they suspend that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Word I, I, I used to work with a guy that used to do private investigation on the side, right? And oh. a, a woman hired him to find out what her husband was doing because there was a particular day of the week where he would go out religiously every night and basically oh, didn't really didn't really explain to her where he was going. So this guy used to work with, he followed him. She hired him to follow him. He follows him. He goes to this apartment building. He parks his car, goes upstairs. My friend tries to jump out, find out what apartment he went to. But by the time he gets upstairs, he's already, he's already upstairs. So he sits out in front of the apartment building. Um, waiting for the guy to come down, maybe he sees if he's coming down with a woman, maybe he's having an affair, and um, never comes out. Then all of a sudden, he, when he does finally come out, hours and hours later, he comes out by himself, gets in his car, and goes right back home. He did this two times, right? Same thing, two times. He couldn't get up there to see what apartment this guy was going to. So then on a third try, he goes to follow the guy, goes back to the same building, sits out there, and all of a sudden, he notices that this woman comes back to his car, goes in the car, gets something and comes back out. So he's looking and he's like, how does this woman have the keys? And all of a sudden he sees him, another woman waiting for him. And then he walks over to him and they get another car and they head to Manhattan. He follows them to Manhattan. Turns out when they got out the car, it was the guy, it was the, it was the lady's husband dressed like a woman. And what they were doing was they would dress like <laughs> they would dress up like women and go to the village and meet guys. Now, this this woman the was blue married. Oyster, the blue oyster. <laughs> I don't know if it was the blue oyster, <laughs> but the bottom line is then he came back, goes back up to that apartment, changes back into a man and then gets back in his car and goes home. This was his side life. But then the thing is, like, how do you tell a woman, like, how did you not know that he was doing this? You should kind of notice it in his sexual behavior. She said we really wasn't having sex. But that that was some craziness. Yes, Basically no. going to another guy's house, put on women's clothes and a wig, and then go out and meet That's This is the litmus test, Rod. This is the litmus test. Any woman out there, <laughs> tell a dude you want to have sex. And if he suggests anything else, if he suggests... Oh, like, Kelvin. Just oh, watch man. the playoff game. If he suggests anything else, he suggests that's the first clue. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. Yo, I'm telling you, there's a lot of craziness out there. When I make up again, when I make up and a panty started missing and the leg was getting low, she should have noticed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to be clear that when I said before, like my friend that passed from AIDS, it was just because the guy was gay. I know people get AIDS from heterosexual people too, so I want to make sure that so that's clear. Yeah, but but that's a crazy story. Like like there's a lot of down low brothers, but. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, but 
Like, this guy, this guy wasn't listen, a brother. He was, he was, he was a white guy. I just, you know, what I think this, I think this, what happens, I think people have such a, a desire to be cared for or be loved or whatever that you'll do certain things to suspend your own intellect that you'll ignore things because there are going to be signs. They're going to be, they're going to be clues. It just is. In other words, there are certain dudes that, that tolerate women, but they don't have a love for women. They don't have, it's not natural. You can see a force. Cause I, I'm telling you, I have seen this a million times. I've seen, I've seen dudes where it's so blatant and the woman is sitting there acting like this dude is, is, is Mike Tyson. And you could just, you already know it. And you're like, am I going to out? Because you can see it. It's just, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And don't get me wrong. It ain't like it was back in the day where a dude had to act feminine either. No, nah, these yeah. dudes don't even have to act feminine. You know what mm. I'm saying? You see that? You see that comment? Yeah, Killer checking in. She said half the time women are gay too, so they uh, like that metrosexual, trisexual ish. You know what I mean? And that yeah, you know that's it. But you know, the, we, that metrosexual gay. and gay is like isn't that two yeah. different things? Yeah, metrosexual. Listen, somebody might call me metrosexual because I use women deodorant. Men deodorant is too strong for me. So I don't like that. No, I like that. Don't share that. You can't do There's some things you just don't say. Deodorant should never be too strong. We got to have a meeting about that. We got to have a meeting about that. Yeah, you you be wearing some women's deodorant now. Look, we gonna have, we gonna find all these men deodorants out here, and you hold it I want no. to men deodorant too strong, man. Burn your arms, smell like musk. I like the pH balance of a woman, but maybe you know. Yo, yeah, move on to the next topic. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Rob, I'm getting right. the citizens arrest. I'm, yo, I'm watching. I'm, I can't even throw my man a life raft right now. <laughs> I'm just keep going. My back, and then this will happen. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh my hey, god. Bro. We get our feet done, man. You got to be with me. That That's not gay. That's not gay. <laughs> metro. We metro. No, no, don't pull me into that, G. Word <laughs> <laughs> up. Look, 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 now that oh, old spice, girl. old spice, burn you up, man. Come on, man. Get... Unbelievable. I don't forgot what the hell we was talking about now. <laughs> My mind is just oh, in a different man. place. Yo, oh, I, you know right. what I'm, you know what I'm gonna do, guys. I. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie quit the show, and, and now we only got to split the paycheck three ways. Yo. <laughs> I gotta come oh, back because of Derek and Kelvin. That's what the, I gotta, the I whole come back. show is gonna be about this on Wednesday. I'm telling you right now, oh, the whole God. show. And it's the well, last Saturday too. Listen, man. Listen, I like. First, I the like, boys like, break up, and now. What you like the way it smells? What do you? What I like, you like secret. I like secret and dove. I use powder well, fresh. And you keep it a secret. That's what we <laughs> ask. Keep that it's shit a secret. It's called secret. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, that's my that's my deodorant of choice, man. That's my stuff, man. <laughs> deodorant. Oh, deodorant. I thought, he, deodorant. I thought he was gonna say tussy. <laughs> Whoa, that oh, guy good. dropped the mic. Right you remember, you remember Tussie? You gotta take Tussie and rub it in the yard. I don't like the Tussie. No, Tussie, Tussie came in the roll on because Big Mama used to wear Tussie. You don't remember <laughs> Big Mama always used to wear Tussie? Yo, uh, Shook still wore Tussie. We still trying to get Tussie. I can't wear that Tussie either, man. What, what, did you, what you just say? Shook was Tussie. <laughs> Dude, stop blowing people up like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dry snitching on the show. I'm gonna not gonna be the only one out here making sense about it, man. I'm dry snitching, oh man. God. Dry snitching, man. Oh Look at that God. better product, Yo, man. Get chicken wing on. Get chicken wing on the show. <laughs> hey, what's the, what, what's the difference when we used to wear it? Before we had do rags, we used to wear stocking caps. Take women's stockings. D, you trying to tie That's a false equivalency. That's right. It says strong that's enough for that's men, but made for women. That's right. That's that right. Was that was the slogan. That was. That's right. I keep my pants but, balanced together. But the slogan doesn't say <laughs> for men to wear it. It's for women that have a very strong body chemistry. Oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh my God. I'm, 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 I'm half man. woman. My mother was a woman. I'm half woman. So I'm, I'm just, they, you I'm just won't stop. The remix is worse than the original. I can't. Oh, Yo, with that said, this is our last Saturday, everyone. Please follow us on Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday at 9 p.m. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Please like, subscribe, hit us in the comments. Jamie, can you bring up the text message? You can text us. Jamie, Jamie, are we here, Jamie? 
Oh, Jamie slow. Jamie might be drunk yeah. behind the scenes, man. I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jamie, Jamie was trying to figure out what you were doing. <laughs> Remember, we moving to Wednesday night this coming Wednesday, man. We'll follow up on my metrosexual stuff, man. But I'm not alone in this world, man. Metrosexuals, let's unite. <laughs> Peace, my oh, brothers. I love man. you guys. See you on Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Peace. Peace. <laughs>